also a 12 into the thundering herd from Marshall. Marshall loves the home field advantage they'll have this afternoon. It's the national championship game of Division One AA, and it's coming up next on ESPN. Welcome back once again to the campus of Marshall University in West Virginia as we get ready for the Division One AA title game. Let's take a look first at how these two teams got here in the semis. Marshall upset the number one seed McNeese State while Montana at home pounded Stephen F. Austin. Hi everybody, I'm Joel Myers alongside Todd Christensen and welcome to the Division One AA National Championship game. The Big Sky matching up with the Southern Conference and from the Big Sky, Montana led by record-setting quarterback Dave Dickinson and Todd, as we found out over the last couple of days, like another coach on the field. And Joel, if you had a guy who was a 3.88 grade point average in pre-med, you'd let him coach on the field as well, but he does it on the field as a player. These are the playoff games. His average, get this, average, 31 of 40, 406 yards, four touchdowns, he, for me, is a lock for the Peyton Award. An interesting combination in the Marshall backfield. In fact, their starting quarterback, 18-year-old Chad Bennington, only a year out of high school, was number three on the depth chart at the start of the season. Really an amazing story, but he has played 13 games, so the inexperience isn't as big a factor as many people might think. But the go-to guy, clearly for Marshall, is Chris Parker. Over 1,700 yards rushing and 16 touchdowns. He has to have a big day for them to win. Let's head down to the field now and join the third member of our team, Adrian Karsten. So thanks very much. You know, you guys are right. Marshall may have some offensive weapons but it is their defense that will be the key to coming away with a win look if the thundering herd can put pressure on a montana team that has outscored their playoff opponents 163 to 14 well they may as well just give the championship trophy to the grizzlies right now marshall defensive tackle uh billy lyon tells me look he's gonna pull his defensive along now if he gets down someone's gonna pull him up joel count on this crowd okay adrian and this crowd what a huge factor working for Marshall University. They won the national championship in 1992 right here. In fact, this is their fourth appearance in the final game over the last five years. What a successful program. Well, and one of the things that the coaches from Montana pointed out, and I think rightly so, is that while the choice turned out to be chance in terms of them hosting this event, this decision was made over four years ago in terms of having the game right here. And so as a result of that, even though Montana concedes the fact that this is a large advantage for Marshall, they're not intimidated. Chris Parker waiting for the kickoff along with Eric Thomas. Getting into it, Andy Larson for the Grizzlies. And the bouncer is going to be taken up front. Finally pounced on and barely gathered in at the 25 by B.J. Summers starting lineups this afternoon for this title game brought to you by Nike. It all starts, we talked about him, Chad Pennington, the true freshman. 10-1 as a starter this year in his 13th game. Leading wide receiver, Tim Martin. The leading wide receiver is Tim Martin, but their leading catcher is the tight end, Jermaine Wiggins. And a Division I AA All-American up front for Marshall. Their left tackle, William Brunell. Joel, right off the bat, they flexed out the tight end that you mentioned. They hit the wide out on first down. Ricky Carter across the 35. So a little wrinkle to start things off for Marshall University. Now defensively for Montana, Corey Falls leads the Grizzlies up front. The young man from Medford, Oregon with 11 sacks so far this season. Jason Grebo, the game of his life last weekend. A couple of sacks, 11 tackles in that win over Stephen F. Austin. And in the secondary, the coaches tell us Blaine McElmurray, their most consistent back there over the last couple of years. And Joel, isn't this interesting? They're giving Montana a bit of its own medicine going to the four-wide set. Parker on the delay. Big yardage on first down all the way up near the 45. They'll give him the 44 for a pickup of seven. Well, this is certainly what Marshall wants to do. They want to keep them on their heels. And they realize, Joel, that despite the fact that everybody talks about the defense, this is going to be a game where people score some points. Marshall can't come out and operate by the status quo. And clearly in the first two plays, Joel, they haven't. Best defense for Marshall, keeping Montana's offense on the sideline. That's right. Second and three. They're on Wiggins, the tight end in motion. It's Parker on the top sweep. 
breaking tackles close to the first down. Boucher in on the stop, the linebacker. Don Reed in his 10th year at Montana. It's the fifth time he has taken the, the, the playoffs. He's done an outstanding job up there at Montana. Great program. Winning season every year as the coach. Jim Donnan in his sixth year at Marshall. And what a successful run. Already a national championship. The quick hitter, Javon Darling, has the first down across the midfield strike. His first carry of the day for the sophomore from Staten Island, New York. And he did an outstanding job of just getting the handoff. Pennington falls down. Take a look at this. It actually is kind of a miniature toss. You saw it right there. The ball left his hand. Darley does an outstanding job, not just in getting the first down, but maintaining possession of the football. So back-to-back -back first downs after the opening kickoff for Marshall. Now they've got it at the 49 of Montana. Pennington with Heat has the ball batted away. They're going to call it incomplete. Corey, Corey Falls. Yes, yeah, Corey Falls got in there. Corey Falls is the guy outside, 6'2", 230 pounds, operating against the All-American, Joel. He's the one that's going to come from the backside. Take a look. Here he comes up. He actually gets a little bit of slot, but there it is, the arm under. Pinnell can't do anything good about it, and he strips him. I, I question whether or not his arm was going forward. The ball came out, but the official said no. Corey Falls working up against the Division I AA All-American at left tackle and William Pinnell, the senior from Alta Vista, Pennsylvania. The quick one for Tim Martin. Gang tackle down inside the 45 and the 42. Mike Temple, one of the first ones over there, the cornerback out of San Diego. Well, Sean Gokachia read the play, but he overran it a little bit, and now they're able to set up in a pretty good situation now, third and about three and a half. This is what they want to do. They want to keep the sticks moving, and as you mentioned, Joel, keep the Montana offense off the field. Big stand here for the Grizzlies. Any drive of four to five minutes, a very successful one for Marshall, keeping Montana's offense and Dickinson on the sideline. Third and three. The completion to Theron Todd. He may be short of the first down, though. Needed to go inside the 39. This is a great tackle by Gokachia, Joel. Situation is it appeared to me that he had the first down. He tackles him and knocks him backward, and as a result, they don't have the first down. His feet were actually on the 39, which would have gave him the first. But Gokachia makes a great tackle, hence the fourth and very short. They will go for it, bringing on the extra tight end, Javon Jenkins, with a bat like Parker, who goes at 200 pounds. They say he plays more like he's 225 or 230. Nice idea. Well, they've got bigger people up front. And a bad toss from Pennington, and that'll nullify any chance they had of picking up the first down. Interesting, they decide to toss the ball on fourth and inches. David Sermon makes the play in the backfield, but I agree with you, Joel. When they had the third one before, they just handed it straight ahead and they were able to get it. You can say that that's, the, that's a mistake of inexperience, but I don't think so. It's just the fact that he just did not make the pitch. He gets the snap, fine, and there it slips out of his hands. He throws it behind Parker, tries to make something of it. That's unfortunate for Marshall. Now what great field position coming up for Dave Dickinson and Montana. Their first ever appearance in the championship game. And right away, the crowd's trying to get in it. They go to the gun. They want to see, they want to try and prevent Montana from hearing the signals. Out of the gun. Dickinson on his own. He's got eight on first down. Will Edwards catching up with him from behind. The senior out of West Virginia. And the starting lineup brought to you by Nike. Kelly Stensrud. He leads the backs with 47 catches so far this season. Matt Wells, their all-time reception and yardage leader. They go with a four-wide receiver set. And up front, Eric Simonson. Their left tackle, two-time All-Big Sky Conference. So now second and short, second and a couple. The running back, Stensrud, doesn't get the first down. 
Defensively now for the thundering herd of Marshall. Billy Lyon, a two-time all-conference performer, a definite NFL prospect at 6'5", 295 pounds. Embry is the only linebacker to start. They're going with a 4-1-6 alignment, so Embry, their best cover linebacker, and Melvin Cunningham, he's come up big the last two years during the postseason. Zach Lastry had four picks in the playoffs. Third to yard. Down the middle, it's deflected and almost intercepted. And just as you mentioned him, Joel, Embry is the guy who's the one that bats it away. That's a great job. Normally an outside backer at six foot, 216 pounds, he does a great job of getting back into coverage and batting it away. Take a look at Embry right in the middle of the field. There he's got the man on the up, lays out just enough. Otherwise, that would have been a, that was a, that could have been a big play. Almost intercepted by Scott Smythe, the strong safety. So Dallas Neal, a 38-yard average coming in. Finding it away. And back deep, it's going to be Tim Martin. A lofty average on punt returns. Very high one. A beauty. And down and touched inside the five. Show Montana with a good coverage on the special teams. And Marshall back deep in their own territory when we return with no score thus far. Welcome back to Marshall. Brian McElmurray makes a tremendous play here. So many times you get college kids that get fooled by the fair catch, but take a look. He sees the fair catch, but he goes behind. He follows the ball. He tracks it and almost makes the catch himself. Drops it right there on the five yard. Excellent play by the free safety, Brian McElmurray. Good call, partners. So now Marshall back at their own five yard line with their second offensive possession, but they should have a huge boost not only from the crowd, but from their defensive unit. Montana had the ball of their own 48, went three and out. Chris Parker, not much available, only a couple. But he's met by Marty Duffin, the senior from Idaho Falls, Idaho. Let me correct myself, Joel, that's Blaine McElmurray. The one thing here that Marshall wants to do is they want to establish up front their dominance. They outweigh the defensive front of Montana by an average of about 25 pounds per man. This is where they have to assert that dominance, because if they have to punt here, get stopped again, that could swing the momentum towards Montana and also do something that they don't want to take the crowd out of the game. Second and seven. The ball close to the eight. Misdirection for Parker. Great tackles across the 10, out to the 12. It'll bring up third and still about two and a half, almost three, Manzanera's Johansi. There's a couple of Manzanera's. Eric and Johansi playing for Montana. Chris Parker. Four years in the playoffs, over 1,200 yards. He's trying today with 163 yards on the ground. He would go over 6,000 yards on his career. No one in the Southern Conference has ever accomplished that feat. Well, every time he makes a carry, it's a record now. Third and three. Good penetration in the backfield. Crevo again. He was a big playmaker against Stephen F. Austin. And Jerome Sowers, a defensive coordinator, certainly is appreciative of that. Crevo is the guy who, he's their LT. He's the man that has to make the big plays. He comes in untouched, trips him up. Big play for the Grizzly defense. Big play in the battle of field position with eight and a half minutes. Left in the first quarter. No score thus far as Joe Douglas waits for the punt from Chris Hansen. Another true freshman out of Georgia for Marshall. Joe Douglas shielding his eyes. The sun is right in his face. That could be consequential, Joel. Wobbler and Douglas calling for the fair catch. Takes it cleanly on the move. Just outside of the 45, they'll say he's at the 48. Great field position again for the second series for the Grizzlies when we come back. Good to see the Grizzly fans made the, made the trek all the way to Marshall University here in Huntington, West Virginia. Joel Myers along with Todd Christensen. Uncharted territory for Montana. They haven't scored yet. They have outscored their first three opponents in the playoffs, 163 to 14. We've got seven minutes already. Holy cow, without a point. Can you believe it? <laughs> no, I can't, actually. <laughs> Especially with the field position that Montana had on their first drive. Now they've got it at the Marshall 43. A late flag right after we went away for interference on the fair catch against Marshall. The completion for Dickinson to Joe Douglas. It's outside of the 36. A pickup of seven. 
third member of our team downstairs, Adrian Carson. Adrian? Joel, considering this is a game for the national championship, I don't know if I've ever seen a home field advantage this significant. Two things. First of all, the crowd noise. Secondly, the quarterback is looking directly into the sun, as Todd pointed out. And thirdly, there's about an 18-inch drop-off from the crowd of the field to the sidelines. In pregame, Dickinson was having trouble actually throwing downhill. He's trying to hit his receivers across the middle until the field dries out. All right, Adrian, second and short. Dickinson loves to run it out of the gun. He's got room for the first down. And takes it out of bounds. An almost delayed hit as they clip the heels of the quarterback at the 25. 57, Will Edwards almost Will Edwards. picking up a, pers or a personal foul. Joel, one of the funny things that Don Reed said is that the young quarterback at 5'11", 175, 180 pounds, the 5'11", could be stretching it as you and I met him. First down. He refuses to slide. He buys his time. The offensive line doing an outstanding job protecting him. Now he cuts to the left, and instead of sliding, he tries to get as much as he can. Takes a little bit of a hit. No late hit. It was right there on the line. Good hustle on the part of Edwards. But Dickinson shows his mobility. Well, he took a slide a couple of years ago when his coach told him to, and he took a spear at the same time. He said, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> That's right. First and 10, the 25-yard line of Marshall from Montana. The direct snap to the running back, Brandon. Doesn't fool the Thunder and Hurd. A yard, yard and a half at the most. You know what it does do, though, Joel? It puts it into their head that they can do that. And so even though it is a one-yard gain, now all of a sudden you say, oh, well, this is something that they might do. Of course, this was made famous with Thurman Thomas and the K-Gun of Buffalo. But Marshall's not having any of it. Don't think that that's not going to come up again, though, later in the game. So a second and long situation. Place kicker has not been called on all that often this year for Montana. Didn't need him. Dickinson threw for 49 touchdowns. The middle of the field is wide open, Joel. Quarterback draw would be absolutely huge here. Dickinson with pressure coming. Can't get rid of it. He's dropped back of the 31 by Jason Grayson. They told us they were going to come on the corner. Well, they came with the corner blitz, but if you if you figure, Joel, it wasn't so much that Grayson got in there so quickly. It was truly a coverage sack. Marshall does a great job in the secondary. You can count the seconds, even though it's in slow motion. You can see plenty of time, takes his three-step drop, looks at one receiver, looks at a second. He's got the time, but Grayson's in there, and even at the last minute, he almost was able to get it away. Give Marshall credit in the secondary. Grayson, the senior from McKeesport, Pennsylvania, leads the team with four interceptions so far this season. Now third and 15 after the loss of six of the sack. Dickinson going for the bundle in the end zone and batted away. Melvin Cunningham taking it away from Earhart. Melvin Cunningham is the other one double-A All-American that Marshall has. He drew up the free safety. Take a look, this is man all the way, and, and Earhart is their big man. That's a nice route. Six foot four, 205 pounds, right at the last minute. The pride of Red Jacket West Virginia bats it away. I like it. You had to get that Red Jacket in early. I did, but you know the one thing is that they're paying the price for that. They're calling timeout now, and they have 15 yards to go. What, I, what I'm saying, Joel, is that there's a situation where they should have just gone for a five- or six-yard deal, set themselves up with the field goal. Now, for going for the touchdown, as a result of that, they got a 48-yard field goal. They're not really confident in the leg of their young man. Now that's why they called the timeout. Coach Dickinson talking to the staff upstairs. Will they go for it on fourth down or try a field goal? We'll find out. Dave Dickinson talking to his wide receiver on the cross. He's only one of three so far, Todd, for seven yards. And he's talking about the crossing routes because the middle of the field truly is open. And I think that's what he saw downfield when he went for the post pattern. But for all the accolades that we have given him in terms of his great intuitiveness, instinct, et al., I think it was a bad decision to go deep because now they'll be attempting about a 48-yard field goal. They're going to call it officially a 47-yard attempt that would be the longest of the year for Andy Larson. got plenty into it and it's good wow. just inside the upright Andy Larson giving the Grizzlies an early three-point lead it comes with 609 left in the opening 15 minutes of play Joel that's absolutely a bonus for Montana that coming up third you know you got to say to yourself Larson when they called the timeout he said to himself what you don't have any confidence in me what's the deal so he comes out there and saying to himself well maybe I can maybe I can but boy he had a lot of leg in that one he cleared about five yards let's look back on that 
Big play by Melvin Cunningham. Well, Cunningham does a great job playing outside in. It's a good route by Earhart. The ball just hung just a little bit too long. What the great play is is that he's able to get across without even touching him. How many times have we seen in the end zone where there's that slight collision, the flag comes out? But Cunningham, that was a big-time play. Don't forget, coming up later this evening on ESPN2, I love it, Lindros and the Flyers taking on the Canadians at the fabled Forum in Montreal. That is later tonight, 7.30 Eastern, on the Deuce. How about that Legion of Doom? They're unstoppable. <laughs> I love it. That's some big bodies. I tell you what, I tell you what, I'm serious now. Leclerc, Lindros, those guys can play some football. You don't like hockey at all. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> they can hit some people. Three to nothing, Marshall, trailing Montana. In fact, since 1990, to give you an idea of how decisive this home field advantage has been for Marshall, they are 45 and three over the last 48 home games. Wow. Chris Parker, Eric Thomas, waiting for the kickoff from Larson. And another very short one's going to be taken up front past the 30 by B.J. Summers again. Across the 32 to the 33. People at home are saying to themselves, why do they keep doing this? Why not just kick it deep? I'm not so sure that it's that they're necessarily afraid of Parker or the deep people as much as I think they're trying to force some people up front who normally don't touch the football, maybe to fumble, make a mistake, and that they can get a turnover. The road to the championship for Marshall. Not as easy as it turned out for Montana. In fact, the last one, they had to come from behind on the road at McNeese State, the home of the Cowboys, to beat the number one seed, 25 to 13. Pennington setting up the screen for Parker. He had blockers. Bad break for Marshall at the 30. And how many times do you see it, Joel? You've got to cut in the direction that you're cutting. That's the leg you have to use. In his case, he wanted to cut left and used his right leg. The inside leg slips out from under. If you're right, they set that up well. This is the third possession for Marshall, and they're still looking for their first first down of the contest. The loss of three. Second and 13 now for the Thundering Herd. That's a strike from Pennington finds his wide receiver, Theron Todd. He's just short of the first down by a little more than a yard on the 12-yard reception. And that's a nice timing throw for the youngster. That's one of the most difficult passes for a quarterback to throw. Get the drop and throw across your body on the comeback round. As the five-step drop strikes it. Boy, that was a strike. That's a good-looking throw. Pass the note, the official statistician here, calling it a 48-yard field goal by Larson, a career pass. Parker has the first down across the 45. So there is the first first down of the contest. Make it the second, actually, for the Thundering Herd. And they run behind their All-American Pinnell. Take a look at him getting off the ball. This is the advantage, once again, of the big bodies. Coming off one block, going after the inside backer. Pinnell has been hurting. He's been banged up a little bit, but he's a senior, and this is, after all, the championship game. They run behind their big man when they want the money. First and 10, Marshall. The running back, Eric Thomas, belts it. And is the flag going to come out late? Yes. Blaine McElmurray with a big-time hit. Well, I think it's the fact that Thomas shouldn't have been showing off as much as he was. McElmurray might. I have a theory on this, Joel. If you can get there in time to make a big hit like that, you should be get, able to get there in time to bat the ball down. All the time when I was playing in the NFL, when guys would hit me and straddle me and give me that. We have a dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. that story I always used to say but I don't understand you knock me down but it's a game McElmurray makes the big hit here but maybe if he'd have come up a little bit just and, and taken a chance to stick his arm in and bat it down there you can see he stands up and he's styling a little bit trying to get the crowd in the game but as I was informed by my coaches success is the best revenge enjoy the fact that you caught the ball so Eric Thomas cost his team 15 yards I don't know about that penalty either in a national championship game I would agree. I would think that in a game of this magnitude, you know, short of him doing a double backflip, hey, let it ride. Four minutes, 50 seconds left in the opening quarter. Brings up a second and 18 now. Trip 
steps over to the far side. On the crossing pattern, it's Mark Wentz. Not much there. Good defense there on the part of Montana. There's a temptation there when you have a team reeling to go with the blitz and try and get to the young quarterback. Instead, they kept seven in coverage, went with the zone, let him throw a relatively harmless pass underneath. Now they come up third and very long. Bennington missing only one time so far. He's seven of eight in the passing department for 42 yards, averaging 169 yards per game. And there's Jerome Sowers, the defensive coordinator for Montana. Nervous man when we talked with him yesterday, but thus far, Joel, he's really been pushing all the right buttons. So third and 13. Hard to believe no flags as they went for Wiggins to tie it in. And fail on third down, but it looked like there was a jump on the far side of the line. It seems to me that for whatever reason, Marshall is a little bit discombobulated offensively. The snap came, people weren't moving in sync. Take a look at this. There's the snap, one guy comes up, two guys come back a little bit, kind of almost as if they're in slow motion. Pretty decent protection for Marshall, but for some reason right now, they just don't seem to be synchronized. Bro. And ready to punt it away. Joe Douglas shielding away from the sun at the 15. And over Ender. So a break for Montana as it takes a grizzly hop back outside of the 25, going out at the 27. Only a 30-yard punt. Well, we're just 11 days away. The Frisky Car Rental Bowl Week begins on ESPN. Eight bowl games in five days, and it all starts December 27th with the Wiser Lock Copper Bowl. It is going to be Texas Tech taking on Air Force. The next day, Texas A&M and Michigan, the Builder Square Alamo Bowl. Finish it all up in Tampa, New Year's Day, the Outback Bowl, Penn State and Auburn. Great bowl week on ESPN. Montana with a 3-0 lead. That's Dave Dickinson back on the field. First and 10 of their own 27. Brandon finds a little grease and hits it for six, almost seven yards. Jerome Embry, the linebacker, making the stop. Jerome Embry. That run is for show, just to let them know that they can run the ball. I will say this, though. If they continue to get the six and seven yards on first down, it could become a habit, but don't count on it. Second and four, and a short four at that. About 80 to 90 percent of the time, no work for Dickinson out of the shotgun. And Dickinson is belted, it's loose, and a flag comes down. They're going to say that Cohn got to him a little bit late after he had already had his arm in motion, an incomplete pass. Now, what about the flag? Well, what a stick by B.J. Cohn. I don't think there was anything wrong with the hit. It was right at the same time. The question there is I didn't see anybody motion incomplete, Joel. I guess everybody just assumed it was. I guess this has to be holding, doesn't it? Quick whistle. Let us know that the play was dead. Well, they're talking to Billy Lyons, so I would assume he's trying to make the decision as to whether or not to take the penalty or let it go, and I would think they'd let it go. Illegal touching of a forward pass on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Lost it down. Well, this truly was inconsequential, Joel, simply because of the fact that, take a look here, it's not as if one of the linemen was trying to catch it. Take a look at how he gets whacked, now where the ball goes, it hits him in the butt. Okay, well, I mean, that's nothing that he could do about that. Pass rush by Marshall, watch the left of your screen, boy. Absolutely pulverized in the back by B.J. Cohen, defensive end. Jason Baker, the innocent but guilty party. <laughs> the right tackle, so now third and nine. The heat. He gets it away in time for the first down. Taking it in, Matt Wells. Their all-time receiving in reception and yardage leader in Grizzly history. Absolutely a huge catch, too, because Dickinson is getting punished back there now. Digs downfield, giving him a little bit too much of a gap. In this case, is Larry Moore, not normally a starter. This is a great job of catching the ball simply because there are a lot of times where the receiver doesn't get his hands underneath it. Wells does. Great catch, big play for Montana. He's a senior from Ashland, Oregon. Trips over to the near side. They're all stacked, and Brandon breaks it for a big gain on first down. He's got almost 10. On first and ten. Joel, on the play that began this drive, they did the exact same thing. They lined up all the receivers together, 
spreading the field, and the middle of the field right now seems to be open, but Dickinson is not getting the time that he needs to get the ball in the middle of the field. So Montana with only three so far, with inside of two and a half minutes to play in the first quarter, and you can see what they've done over their first three playoff games My offensively. That's why it's surprising it's been so quiet so far for the Grizzlies. And Brandon gets the first down on second and left of the yard as we head downstairs and join Adrian Carson. Adrian? The guys behind the Marshall bench, they're real happy with their defensive game plan at this point. Remember I mentioned Billy Lyon was going to be the leader here. He's got one of what he promised himself, potentially four sacks today. Now the defensive backs, Todd, you mentioned the middle of the field is open. That's what they're trying to keep. They're trying to force the Montana receivers to go with an outside release, keep the middle of the field open. They'll figure they're strong enough there to defend them. Adrian, first down, Grizzlies at the 48 of Marshall. Five wide receivers set, Matt Wells on the quick one. Nice move to the boundary. Good yardage on first down, out of the 41 after a pickup of seven. I'm really impressed with the creativity that they have here on their offense. Brent Peace, of course, a former NFL or quarterback coach here for Montana who calls the bulk of the plays. Very creative here. Some of the things that they wanted to do early were not effective, and they're able to shift gears early on. I think that's the key to success, Joel. There's a lot of guys that can coach on Thursday and, on Thursday and Friday. Different story on Saturday. Second and short, second and three. behind Joe Douglas. It's incomplete. Maxwell on the coverage. It's something you don't normally see from Dave Dickinson, Joel. He had the happy feet. You don't usually see that from a veteran quarterback like that, but you can see he hesitated a little bit, jumped up and down, threw the ball behind Douglas. I would think that Mickey Matthews, the defensive coordinator for Marshall has to be pleased with the push by his front four of Duncan, Edwards, Lyon, and Cone. Well, the very thing that they said is that they weren't going to take that many chances and blitz, see if their front four could generate a pass rush thus far it has. Now it's third and three at the 41 of the Thunder in hurry. Going for Earhart, batted away. Tough play. Cunningham coming up again on the coverage. That's great coverage on the part of Cunningham. Earhart is their big receiver. When I say big, I mean he's six foot four. They wanted a situation. They had man coverage. Wanted to throw it up and give him the uh, Alvin Harper, Herman Moore kind of a catch. But instead, take a look at Cunningham to the right of your screen. Right with him. That's just outstanding coverage. So fun now coming up for the Grizzlies. Their second punt over their first three possessions. That's a surprise with 96 seconds left in the first quarter. Tim Martin waiting back for 10. Neal almost had it blocked. That shot much there for Montana. Good field position coming up now for Marshall. Pressure there from Maxwell on the punter. It's a bad decision. Too many times you get punters that try too hard to angle it out. And in that case, that, that case he didn't have McElmurray on that side. That's the guy that made the great play before. I don't understand why he didn't go to that right side again. So now Marshall trailing three to nothing. We'll have it first and ten of their own 28. Now, we talked about this offense from Montana, and they've been averaging in the playoffs, but at the 400-yard passing per contest. During the playoffs over the last three, Marshall has only given up 134-yard passing a game, so their defense has been sound. Pennington has two, and he finds Wiggins the tight end. First down, Marshall. The coverage there from David Sermon, the outside backer. Well, Wiggins is a man with 53 catches coming into this game. He just runs the crossing route. Inside backer tries to get him tries to get him there at the last minute, lets him run across his face. In that case, that was David Sermon who needs to pick him up a little bit quicker. You know, we're in the elevator together. Boy, he was cocky. He said, you, you make sure that when you get on the air, you mention me. Okay, Jermaine, you got it. Good protection for Pennington. Going for the bundle, and it's dropped by his wide receiver. Actually, that was Eric Thomas out of the backfield who had beaten the defensive back at separation. And that would have been Thomas's chance to atone for the bad penalty that he made last series, but instead goes right through his arms. Pennington couldn't have done it any better. They've got him in the out-and-up route. He's got man-for-man -man coverage. Pennington lays it right on his arms. You know, for the, for the sake of not trying to give him an excuse, but don't forget, that is the sun ball. Remember, he had to look back into the sun. Still, got to catch that one. Got the best of one of the better ones in the secondary, McElmurray. 
for Montana. So now second and 10 from the 39. Here comes the heat. And it's incomplete as Pennington was going for Theron Todd but had Martin Duffin right in front of him. Well, the official was in front of him. Shades of James Hasty and the Raiders, if you remember that game, Joel, which I know you do, being the voice of the Raiders. Take a look at the middle of the field. You're going to get a chance to see it. How about that umpire? Right in the middle, see the umpire trying to get out of the way, but he can't do it. And as a result, Todd's got a complaint. However, the, the ball <laughs> did look a little bit overthrown. Marty Duffin, right in the face of the quarterback, Pennington. So now third and ten. Pennington finds Martin. First down, Marshall. Does he ever show composure back there in the pocket? Great protection as well. Well, what he did there is that they, they had eight in coverage. They only, rushed, they only rushed three. And as a result, in the middle, Martin is able to find it. Look at him sneaking behind Crabo. Crabo can't make the play. That, that's a good route. That's a good route by Martin to find the seam in the middle. Saudi Daisy, Tennessee, hometown of Tim Martin. 50 catches on the year. Parker's been quiet so far. Good yardage on first down inside the 40, down to the 39, a pickup of almost six. See, this is what I'm surprised. I know that Coach Donnan likes to throw the ball, but when you've got your big stud back there, and the whole issue is keeping the offense, keeping uh, Montana's offense off the field, I'm very surprised that they haven't been giving the ball more in this first quarter, Joel. Parker with better than 1,700 yards on the season, averaging 124 a game. Second and four. Parker, two times in a row, spinning close to the first down. Depends upon the spot, he may have it, though. Randy Riley wrapping him up. Now that is going to be the final play of the first quarter, a quiet one for the Grizzlies offensively. They have the lead, but quiet by their standards. Three to nothing Montana at the end of the first 15 minutes of the Division I AA National Championship. It was raining all day yesterday here in Huntington, West Virginia. What a break. Absolutely perfect football weather. Game time temperature 51 degrees. Joel Myers, Dot Christensen, Adrian Carson. The Division I AA National Title Game. This drive started all the way back on the Marshall 28. Chad Pennington, year out of high school, their 18-year-old quarterback, has him first and 10 at the 35 of Montana. A 3 to nothing lead for the Grizzlies. The quick one. Todd's got it. Make it Carter, 23, not 22, and he's got a first down to the 24. <laughs> Well, this isn't what you would have anticipated in terms of the quarterback comparison in the first quarter. You see Dickinson struggling. Don't forget, Dave Dickinson is the man who set the one double-A record for a career, 67% completion. He's less than 50% at this point. Of course, Pennington seems to be getting a pretty good rhythm. 10 for 14, now 11 for 15. And he was very efficient last week in the win on the road at McNeese, 26 of 35 for 236. Parker losing it. It's on the ground. Does Montana come up with it? Grizzlies say they've got it. The official says second down, Marshall. Did Parker beat out Boucher for the ball? Well, it looked to me like Boucher got there first, and that was great hustle on the part of Parker to get it back. I thought for sure that Boucher was the one who had come up with it. That's when you win the arm wrestling championship, I think, Todd. I guess. That's when those, that's when those yokes pay off. Take a look here. Draw play to Parker. Cuts up the field. Gets stripped a little bit right there by Falls, I believe. There it is. You can see he falls on top of it, but he doesn't quite get the ball. There you see underneath. You just saw it there. Fell into the chest of Parker. Big break for Marshall. Second and 11 situation. All day again for Pennington. <laughs> you like that, Ron? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't chuckle at that, I realize. But when he came up and he saw Mike Boucher, he couldn't decide whether to slide it all over his shoulder, and it looked a little bit awkward. Great protection on the part of Marshall. Look at the time that he has. 1,001, 2, 3, 4, 
four, five. Trying to cut the field. What up? Slide. Oh, yeah, okay. All right. I'll lower my head. One of the things that he mentioned to us, if you recall, Joel, one of the things he wanted to work on was his nimbleness. You just saw that last shot of Pennington. Doesn't look 18 to me. 37. On the square off, it's dropped by his wide receiver, Todd. More than enough for the first down. You know, we mentioned, Joel, we mentioned 11 for 15 by the youngster Pennington without a couple of drops. This kid could be near perfect. I mean, he's just having an outstanding game. He's really in his rhythm. He's got to talk to these people on the sidelines to come up with the catches. He looks 14 after we saw that last picture, and he's playing like he's 24, 25. Openlander in now to try to tie things up. The junior from Tampa, Florida. It'll be a 39-yard attempt well within his range. Does he pull it? No. Just inside the left upright. So Marshall is on the board for the first time in this national title game. It is even at three now with 12.54 left of the first half. As we'll come right back to campus, Marshall University. This was the tragic headline here in Huntington 25 years ago, November 14th, 1970, a day that will never be forgotten here at Marshall throughout West Virginia. Well, on campus, the Memorial Fountain shut down at a ceremony each year on November 14th in remembrance of the 75 lives lost in that plane crash. The Marshall program thriving today, the strength drawn from remembering that tragedy back on November 14th of 1970. No one who's ever been a part of football will ever forget that. They've made it all the way back. So impressed with the facilities here. I mean, this is really a first-class program in terms of not only their facilities, their team, their coaching staff. They've done a great job here. Jim Openlander, who just tied it up, the junior from Tampa, with a 39-yard field goal. Now ready to kick it away as Josh Brandon waits back deep for Montana. And Brandon on one hop from the five. Good return, north-south, and he takes it across the 30. As the Grizzlies will now have him for the fourth time offensively out of their own 31. Scores 3-3, three to three, Joel, but take a look at the time of possession. 2-1 to one in favor of Marshall, and the score is only 33. That also is 28-17 to 17 in terms of plays from scrimmage. I think that's something that we didn't expect. Everybody talks about the big play potential, the Grizzlies, but they're a short passing team, and they're also a possession team. They haven't been able to do that thus far. Receivers in the set as usual for Dickinson. The delay, Kelly Sensru. Good yardage on first down. Out near the 40, brought down by Embry, the linebacker. One of the things that Montana has to do is they have to exploit that middle. With the four with the four one six that you mentioned, take a look at the gaps right here. Really, as a result, there's only one guy right here that can make this play if the front four is able to do it. And you can see they already have a lineman on him, and as a result, he's able to come off even though Embry makes the play. It's nine yards downfield. And now Dickinson will run for it on second and short. He'll pick up the first down, taking a couple of hits along the way inside Marshall territory down to the 47. Now notice that time I didn't chuckle. All right, I'm not going to make fun. I've got to have a lot of respect for a guy that's 5'11", 175 pounds, and scrambles out of the pocket and lowers his shoulder against a strong safety. Now you're just talking about the middle of the field in Dickinson did look strong he's not going to slide as he told us yesterday but Swapper, Jermaine Swapper, and Larry McLeod the top two tacklers are not on the field to start the game because of the 4-1-6 alignment so that has to hurt Marshall in the long run as well Dickinson goes down with pressure from Billy Lyon We've been talking about the rain a little bit, Joel. There have been a number of times where people have slipped. I think he actually was able to avoid Lyon, and it's his own feet. Take a look. You're going to see they did a stud. He comes right in the middle. He fakes it. Now comes back right there. Oh, you know what? Lyon did. Just got a piece of his leg. Sack for Lyon. Loss of eight on the play. Second and 18. Overshooting Pacheco. Not Purdy, but Raul Pacheco, the right shirt freshman from Honolulu. Well, nobody can afford to come up third and 18, even with this offense. And that's part of the problem. They're trying to take too big a chunks. 
situation there with the draws, some of the screens, and some of the short passes over the middle, what they call swirl routes, which look like crosses that come back out, setting down in the middle of the field on short hooks. That's what Montana has to do, Joel. Dickinson only 3 of 9 for 26 yards thus far. This from a quarterback who's thrown for better than 5,000 yards this year. They get and they get to Dickinson. B.J. Cone. The offensive people from Montana told us that they like the matchup of their all big sky tackle Simonson versus B.J. Cohen. But right here you can see that Cohen is the guy that gets in. His quickness is a little bit too much. He's actually on the ground and he's able to struggle in and get a hold of the leg of Dickinson. So now Tim Martin, all-time punt yardage leader in martial history, waits for it from Dallas Neal. Pass kick. Another wobbler. Takes the Montana Hoppo. As Martin stays away and it goes out of bounds. At the 26. So tied at three, the thundering herd get it back. And don't forget a lot of college basketball and great hoops coming your way later today on ESPN. Seton Hall, Ohio State, starting it off at 4 o'clock Eastern. Then Louisville and Georgia Tech later at 7.30. It'll all be followed by California and Minnesota. And at midnight Eastern, 9 o'clock, out of the West Coast, Oregon and Fresno State in the new Shark Tank. At three, Thundering Herd have it back, looking for their second national championship. They won it in 92. The pass is a reverse. Oh. Don't forget, he can throw it again. And it's almost tipped off and batted away. Alert play by Ryan Palma. Not just Ryan Palma, but I got to tell you, Martin really paid a price. He got absolutely pulverized by Johansi Manzanares at the end of the play. You can see he's backwards, so it's going to be a throw. Watch at the end, number 50, take a run out of Manzanares. Yeah, oh, man, that hurts. Actually, oh, gosh, that's no fun. I tell you, that is no fun. And that comes from a 6'3", 265-pounder in Manzanares out of Great Falls, Montana. And when you're 5'9", 175, it hurts. Second and 10. Good protection again. Pennington throws it away. That's the poise of the youngster. They set up a screen. The screen that they set up before, Joel, was very effective when Parker slipped. They came back to the plate. Montana was waiting on it. Pennington did not get sacked. Threw it away to come up now third and ten. Freshman of the year in the conference. Well, he started the season, we mentioned, as number three on the depth chart. Knee injuries, though, to the starting quarterback, Larry Harris, and then Mark Zeban moved him all the way up to number one. His first start came September 30th against Tennessee Chattanooga. 10-1 record as a starter. Third and 10, back in his own 26. And Pennington has Todd, who hangs on this time, but they say he's out of bounds. Good call. Good call by the official right on top of it. I gotta tell you, Joel, I am really impressed with this young man's accuracy. Take a look at the foot is able to drag. There's the catch. His foot's off the ground. Maybe not. Maybe not. That's close. That's close. I got to tell you, though, great story with regards to Penny that they told us. Well, I'll get to it when they're back on offense. Great story, though, with regards to the head coach, Penny. Manson. 35-yard average after the first two. Douglas waiting back deep. Good kick. Very high one. Good hang time. And Douglas with the sun at his back, we might add, taking it in cleanly at the Montana 32. Susana so field position once again for the Grizzlies, but their offense has been sputtering as they're tied in three. Coach Donna tells a story about that young man, Pennington, that he knew that he was a tough guy when during a scrimmage he came out and his hands are really dirty, and he came over and wiped his hands on the shirt of... Coach Donna, there he is, an 18-year-old freshman. He's cocky enough to come over and say, I'm going to get my hands clean. He wipes on the shirt of the head coach. That's what he knew. He said, you know what? I could have a stud. <laughs> Obviously feeling very good about himself and his stature with the squad. <laughs> yeah, but at that point, he's like the sixth quarterback. <laughs> it's tied in three. 39-yard field goal by Overlander for Marshall. And 
It is a 48-yarder for Andy Larson of Montana. The Grizzlies have it back. Heat again, and Dickinson gets it again from Billy Lyons. Well, they felt strongly that their four-man push was going to be enough. The last time they did a loop to get Lyon free. Take a look at 86 here and see what they do. He comes inside. He's actually double teamed, but both guys decide. Inevitably, that's what happens, Joel. You've got two offensive linemen that say, well, we're double teaming him, so I meet you, Glenn. Wait. And he breaks through. His defensive coordinator, Mickey Matthews, and he wasn't bragging about lines. He said, watch him. He will play at the next level. He's that good a ball player. Loss of 10. And a dead ball foul coming up against the Montana Grizzly offense. Todd, let's not forget that's three sacks over the last four plays that Dickinson has been on the field. And now they're creating so much problem they get Scott Curry to jump. He's got a dead ball, false start on the offense, five yards passing, still second down. Pass rush affects everything. It affects your quarterback, it affects your offensive line. Take a look, you can see Curry moves a little bit too quickly. They've really got Montana reeling right now. So now, all of a sudden, he starts his drive at the 32. And that man's back. doing everything right, Joel. Mickey Matthews. Back at the 18. Second and 25. The quick one for Douglas. Not much there. Thomas Maxwell held him up. Got support, and we head downstairs to our big man, Adrian Carson. Joe, the big man for Montana, Dave Dickinson, very frustrated, very impatient right now because almost nothing is working. You know, the screen pass and the draw work well after he completes about four or five passes in a row, but they can't get anything rolling here. Don Reed says he is better off when Reed coaches him very little. He spent a lot of time with his quarterback off the field in that last defensive series for Montana. Adrian on third down. This is the third and 17. Got time. And Douglas has the defender coming over his back to poke it away. Larry Moore. It's a good play by Larry Moore. Not normally a starter, but because of the 4-1-6 alignment, he's in there in coverage. And Dickinson, you're right, is very frustrated. That certainly wouldn't have been the first down, but I think he wanted that one just for a little confidence, but he didn't even get that. So now Dickinson, 4 of 11 so far in the passing department, 33 yards. Jim Martin waiting for the punt. Dallas Neal will get off a little bit better than what we saw previously. Here comes the heat, and they almost get to it, but they get to Neal. Oh, they creamed it. So they sold out for the block, and it's going to cost them. Larry Moore, the guy that made the great play before, makes the play here, and you know what? That was that was the operative phrase you used, Joel. They sold out. It wasn't a situation where one guy tried to make a block. I got a personal foul on the defense, roughing the kicker, 15-yard penalty, first down. Huge blow. Really is, and I don't understand it. Why do you want to do this here? Take a look, you're going to see more. I mean, it's not even close. No debate here. Just runs right into his foot. More just, that was really a bad play. And considering the fact that the defense is playing so well, you've got a guy that has four career touchdown returns. Why are you rushing the punt anyway? Let's also consider that this punter just had a 13-yard punt as well. Very good point. So now Montana's offense with a new life back on the field, first and 10 at their own 40-yard line. The drive is alive with a personal foul call. Well, Marshall at this point probably should be up by about two touchdowns without the mistakes of the drop passes, the penalty earlier that was crucial, turnovers, field position. And that man, Coach Donnan, can't be very happy. Just not smart football on the part of Marshall thus far in the first half. Well, here's a big story, Todd. Dickinson's under his center. They set up the screen. 
Zendrew can't get away from the tackle. He breaks that tackle. It's a big gainer. Will Edwards saves a big play as we go downstairs and check in once again with Adrian Karsten. Guys, here's the reason they tried to block that punt. In pregame warm-up, they were timing the snap of Montana from, uh, from the actual snap of the ball to the kick, and it was over two and a half seconds. Now, if you can snap the ball and punt it inside of two and a half, usually no one's going to get to it. They figured it was too long. It was close to three seconds, and they had a shot at it. Adrian, that's well and good, but it still makes no sense when you're stuffed on the team and you're going to get the ball in midfield anyway. It's still a bad play. Second and four. Dickinson with the check at the line, calling a new play. Matt Wells drops immediately. Big time play again by Larry Moore. Well, Larry Moore is, is, has it all saved up, Joel. He's been a reserve. He's been a special teams guy. Now he wants to make some big plays on defense. That's exactly what he's doing. He loves the 4-1-6, and now Montana is showing Dickinson under the center for the first time regularly as he got under his center again. I think one of the things that they want to do is that they're going to go with some shorter routes here, Joel. Third and four now at the 46. Five wide receivers in the set. Quarterback draw, heads up call by the coach. His coach just yesterday said, we've got another coach on the field and our quarterback, and we've got a coach in the booth. Todd Christensen, since the first series, says use the middle. It's available in the 4-1-6. Well, one of the things that you just got to do is, is, is you got to give Dickinson a lot of credit here. The guy is struggling, throwing the ball. He's not ineffective. He steps back, gutty play, and look, as you can see, not unlike the proverbial Red Sea parting, there's a big opening for Dickinson. Big play for Montana now inside the 40. And I love his center, Kemper. He was looking for someone to block, but nobody was there. 39 yards passing. Dickinson, nice little fly step under his throwing Earhart. He did a good job to avoid the sack, though. Actually, he was going for Pacheco that time. I got to tell you, I, the defense of Marshall is just playing outstanding. Big play, come back. You've got a chance to head down the field, and the coverage has just been excellent. Mickey Matthews has done a great job of preparing these people. We're tied at three with 6 0 3. Left in the opening 30 minutes of play, it's the national championship game, Division One AA. Montana looking for their first title. Marshall their second. Dickinson after the play take, and there's a face mask. That's going to be another personal foul. B.J. Cohen, but he did not pull the flag out. No, what he pulled out was just to mark it. B.J. Cohen is just having a field day out there, and that was the man that I think that, as we say, talking to the offensive field of Montana, they weren't that concerned about. But Cohen is really, Simonson is just really having a difficult time with him. Right there, you can see it's the shoulder yes. pad, Joel. Good call by the referee. Or in that case, good non-call. Aldi McGinty, the referee for this national title game. So another sack. That's four unofficially. I've got four sacks now, yes. Third and 19. Dickinson finds some time, but a holding penalty is coming up, and Dickinson is belted again. Ricky Hall from behind. One of the things that I'm surprised at, the holding, I'm, I'm guessing that they'll refuse that and make them kick. But the thing that I'm surprised at is that both sides said the effectiveness of their screen passing game. If they're going to continue to come like this unabated, Montana absolutely has to go with more screens and draws, Joel. Got holding. Holding on the offense. Penalty decline. Fourth down. Eric, si Eric Simonson has just been having a big struggle with Cohen. Take a look at the end. He's just going to grab him by the face mask and pull him down. That's a big-time takedown. Good call by the official. Safe to say they're going to set up for a return this time. Dallas Neal in <laughs> once again. Jim Martin waits back inside the 20. loses it and fortunately for Martin his very alert teammate comes up with it Ryan Nichols back there to gobble it up 
come Ryan back. Marshall with the ball, but very deep in their own territory. Tim Martin is very fortunate, and once again, a bad decision on the part of the Marshall Cognizetti. Take a look at it. He's coming back at sideways, but look where his feet are. He's on the five-yard line. You should be letting that go. The basic explanation for everybody in special teams is, hey, once it's over your head at the 10-yard line, let it go. Fortunately for Martin, there and Todd Johnny on the spot to make the recovery. So Marshall will win it for the sixth time offensively in the first half, tied at three with Montana. But all the way back at their own 11. Chris Parker, the forgotten man in their offensive set so far today, takes it out across the 12 to the 13 for a pickup of just about three. Well, it just goes to show that you and I should not get into the business of predicting. You know, at the top of the show, we're talking about Parker, 16 touchdowns, what a stud, averaging over 100 yards a game. And, of course, the average, average in the playoffs coming into this game for Dickinson was 400 yards. None of these things have come to fruition. It's been a defensive struggle, and I, for one, are completely surprised. That's why we always stay out of the city of lost wages. Parker now 10 carries for 31 yards. Penning to the short drop a flag as they were holding Tim Martin, the wide receiver, coming over on the coverage with Jake Dennehy. Creepo is the guy who they're Actually, going to, yes. that's who they're going to call it on, and that's unfortunate because the ball really wasn't catchable. But a lot of times when you're a defender, you're not sure of where you are in the field, and Creepo, as a result, tries to make a play when he didn't need to. Defense, pass interference, spot foul, first down. 37, not 27, with the penalty. Watch the left of your screen. It's just a flat route. Cre Crebo comes out right there, and of course that ball. There's no way that he was going to get to that ball anyway. Crebo's got him, on the, got him on the flat. You can see the ball is. There's no way he's going to get it, but it gets in his back. And the official throws the flag. Automatic first down on that third penalty of the day against Montana. It's out to the 18. but still plus yardage as he gets four Manzanera's getting him from behind well, one of the things that Montana wanted obviously was to get the crowd out of the game and they've done that certainly on the offensive side for Marshall but they haven't generated enough of their own to do anything thus, thus far Montana's defense is spending an awful lot of time on the field Joel Play is blown dead. Offensive penalty coming up. We got a dead ball. Illegal snap on the center. Five-yard penalty. Still second out. They call it on Dave Honick, the senior from McKeesport, Pennsylvania. Broke a bone in his foot during the preseason. Just finally came back at the end of October. There's the rock right there as he rocks. Whether it's intentional or not, that's trying to draw Montana off sides, and that's what the umpire saw, and that's what he called. So that negates the pickup of four on first down by Parker. Take it back five, and it's second and 11 at the 17. The whole field advantage we talked about. As Pennington barely gets it away in time to Wiggins to tie it in, and Wiggins in the open field. Big yardage. There's the breathing room for Marshall. Out to the 38. Pennington hit him right in stride. One of the things that Montana did there is they went a little bit too deep in their zone. Here, here he comes across Wiggins on just a crossing route. They just let him go. Take a look at the left of the, left of the screen. Now, Crebo cannot follow the guy into the middle of the field. As a result of following him, he is out of position. Wiggins coming up with his 245 pounds. Heading forward, that's a load. That's just what 5'10", 180, Mike Temple wanted to see on the edge. <laughs> first and 10 outside of the 38. Inside of three minutes left in the first half, tied at three. Here comes the blitz. Pennington gets it away, and it's almost intercepted. Temple got his hand on the ball. He read it perfectly. One of the things that happened early in the game, and Temple was paying attention to it, and that is, is that when Pennington went to his helmet to touch himself, that was an all-hooks pattern. That time Temple read it, came up, and you're right. And if that ball is not thrown high, it's six the other way. 
Pennington looking at the hand signals. They send to the plays from the sideline. That is the biggest misdirection call we've seen all day. Passing yardage benefiting Marshall over Montana with only 39 to 101. No one could have anticipated that. put that right paw out there. Jermaine Wiggins, the sophomore from Boston. In fact, their leading pass catcher this year with 53 receptions coming in. He was the one that Coach Donnan also pointed out to us. He really felt that that is the guy that they have on their team, even though he's a sophomore, that has the best chance at the next level, professional level. Parker, the only one in the backfield. Getting on a third of their third down tries thus far. Third and ten. Pennington with time. Will it get the marker? No. Coming up short is Ricky Carter, the wide receiver. David Sermon with the hit. Now will Donnan make a Switzer-like call? What do you think, Joel? Close Doubtful. to midfield? Needs more than a yard on fourth down. A little more than a yard, yard and a half. And the punting unit comes on. Guys, there's a, there's a half to go. Their defense has been dominant. I don't think there's a big decision here. Your tough partner all over Switzer a week later. I just said a Switzer-like decision. <laughs> I didn't say it was bad or good. I just said that was a decision. I'm one of those people that thought it was a good decision. It just didn't come about. Chris Hansen brings down a very high snap. That's a good catch. Douglas doesn't call for the fair catch, and he's got some room. He gets it across the 20. I'm near the 23. So one final chance for the first half for Dickinson of the Montana offense coming up on ESPN2. Oh, more championship hardware to be handed out. It's Texas and Nebraska later today, 4 o'clock Eastern. The NCAA Division I Women's Volleyball Championship. Join us on ESPN2, live from the Mullen Center in Amherst, Massachusetts. It all starts at 4 o'clock Eastern. Interesting decision right here, Joel. You would, you would assume, you would assume, right, that they're going to go for it down here. A minute 52 left. Dickinson has just struggled unbelievably. I wonder if they're just going to run it out. They move the pocket, trying to elude some of the pressure, and it's a fully driven ball by Dave Dickinson. Matt Wells had it go off his foot. It went off his foot. That's why the complaint. That's why the complaint. I'm not sure that it hit the ground. I think Jason Grayson picked it off. I think it was a skip before it got to Wells. Grayson did come up with it. But it was that ever a wobbler from Dickinson. Bad throw. Take a look and slowly see as to where the ball ends up. Does it ever hit the ground? Take a look right here. You're right. You're right, Joel. It did skip. Good call by the official. So a break for Montana. They've got a second and ten situation. Just shy of their own 23, tied at three. Dickinson on the cross. Wells again. Not much available. A late hit. Definitely a late hit after he was out of bounds. The coaches for Marshall just have to be living. They can't believe some of the decision-making that has been happening here. Just awful. Clearly out of bounds by at least two yards. And not only that, Joel, the guy is in the grass. They know he's going to go down anyway. Why take the chance? we got a dead ball. Push the foul against the defense. 15 yards, first off. It would have been third from the 28 instead from the point of the infraction they'll mark it off well thomas maxwell it's one thing to be a tough guy but you got to be thinking excuse me it's not maxwell it's summers right there he's clearly out of bounds and he comes with the helmet under the chin if that would you know joel if that would have been the nfl he could have got tossed right now with 97 seconds left of the first half this marshall defense has been phenomenal against dickinson uh, the montana offense and in my estimation, is the front four. They have been the difference in the game for Marshall University. The heat they put on Dickinson. Here's the screen you were asking for. Douglas is the man. There he goes. Oh, shit. And big yardage inside the 25 for Douglas. Larry Moore catching up with him. Well, once again, the best way to take advantage of the rush is to get the ball out into a screen situation, get some people out front. 
Quick throw, looks right, comes back to the left, and look at the white shirts in front. Great blocking downfield. Gee, that was a nice block. Good block downfield also by Dave Kempert, the center, who, by the way, is the guy who's done an outstanding job out of the gun, snapping to Dickinson. Trips over to the right side. Dickinson looking in that direction. Runs out of time. It won't be a sack, but Duncan certainly put the heat on him. A gain of about a yard for Dickinson after all is said and done. And Montana has used their second time out. They've got one left in the first half, and we will do the same with 64 seconds left in the first half. It's all tied at three of the national title game. Minute four left of the first half of this national championship game. Joel Meyer, Scott Christensen, Adrian Karsten in Huntington, West Virginia. Phenomenal weather. Game time temperature, 51 degrees. And Todd, you were surprised when we went to a commercial that Montana used to time out in this situation. I really am, because with over a minute left, the, the point is that they're already in the close to the red zone. They're in scoring territory. You want to save that for the potential field goal. Remains to be seen whether or not that will cost them. Second and nine. Dickinson going for Wells. Touchdown, Grizzlies. Then again, they could have called timeout for that one specific play. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Give Dickinson all the credit in the world, Joel. The guy's been struggling. It's easy to say, come to the sidelines, hey, coach, let's go with something else. I don't want to go out of the gun. I'm getting beat up. Let me hand the ball off. And what does he do? Sticks it in there, makes a big play. Larson for the point after try. The junior from Helena, Montana. And a seven-point lead now for the Grizzlies, but let's not forget, plenty of time left for Marshall. And they still have a full complement of all three timeouts remaining. Wells is their big guy. You're going to see him right here. Go to the corner. Cuts to the inside and one right there underneath. The, oh, boy. Turned his feet. That's what happened right there. Scott Smythe, who is normally a safety, has him in man coverage, and that was a mismatch. Dickinson found it. Great throw. A lot of poise. That seems to be the essence of this Montana offense, putting people in positions they're not normally in. As you mentioned, there's a safety in man coverage. Don't see it too often if you're Smythe. One thing with regards to Dickinson, Joel, a statistic to me that stands out, besides his 67% completion, 10 interceptions this year and 576 throws. In his starting two years as a starting quarterback in high school, the three years starting here, he's had four losses. Now, we can talk all we want about yardage and everything else, but the guy's a winner. Five play, 77-yard drive, took less than a minute. Got help with that personal foul call. When it was going to be third and five instead, a mark off of 15 from the 28, all the way to the 43 in an automatic first down. Well, Joel, we've used that phrase before about shooting yourself in the foot, but man, they've been using a shotgun, not a pistol. Really hurting themselves, Marshall has. All three timeouts left. There's the short kick we've seen before, and Summers is going to handle it again across the 25, and look at B.J. Summers. Outstanding return across the 45 to the 47. Brought down by Kowalski. Coming up at the half, our lineup of our full preview on ESPN. Plays of the year. Got a feature on Greg Stokes. I think you'll want to see. D'Angelo State All-Star linebacker. Division II All-American. His life ended last month in tragedy. First and 10 at the 47, this time Pennington out of the gun. And short looking for Todd. Well, we had been talking about his accuracy earlier, but that was way off. Remains to be seen as to whether or not Larson's kick is going to come back to haunt them, Joel, because they've been able to get away with that earlier. But, gee, in that situation, I really hate a squib kick because basically now you're in a situation, at least Marshall is, where two first downs and you're in field goal territory. Make them drive at least a little bit. This is the best field position to start a drive today for Marshall. Second and 10 from the 47. Almost got to Pennington, and it's picked off. Mike Temple with the interception. And another chance for another late Sanders coming on another 15-yard penalty. Man, oh man. 
It may have come from the center. Dave Honick over there. Yes, taking Temple far out of bounds. Yes, yeah, far out of bounds. I think I think that was Joel. I think that was Kentucky. Wiggins runs downfield, has kind of a short corner route, deep, deep route coming off in that case, as you mentioned, was Temple. Now as he cuts up, now as he cuts up field out of bounds. Just out of bounds. Oh, he wasn't even on the white part of the out of bounds. Oh, that's a bad decision. Now that sets up the Grizzlies once again. 42 seconds left. We saw what Dickinson can do without a amount of time and one timeout. Mike Temple, the senior from San Diego. Transfer from Grossmont Junior College with a big pick. He's out of a high school in San Diego, Lincoln High School. They've turned out some players. Marcus Allen, six penalties down, 70 yards up against Marshall. Dickinson down again. And that was a good coverage sack downfield. Will Edwards finally getting there, but a couple of looks for Dickinson after the play fake. The defense Stack number is six, Todd. I'm sorry, Joel. The defense really has to come up big here because if the Grizzlies can go downfield and get even a field goal out of this, the momentum is really going to shift and the crowd is going to get completely out of the game. They're running out of time. Only one time out remaining. Dickinson has his man and it's grabbed finally. They'll have to use that last time out. Kelly Sensrud, who leads the backs with 47 catches coming into the game with a grab there. And that's that's the play, if you recall, come, come back with me a little bit clear to the very first series. That was the play where Embry jumped up and barely batted the ball down. If you remember, Joel, in that third down play, that time he's able to weave Embry, get open, and if he didn't have to bobble it, he'd have got another 10 yards. But now with eight seconds left, they're going to have to kick the field goal. Here he comes out with a, with a little bit of a hook route. He weaves Embry. There you can see right there, he's still trying to get it, still trying to get it. At the last minute, he does the smart thing. Catches the ball and just falls down. They've got the first down, but as you said, there's only eight seconds left on the clock. They just used their final timeout. Now, do they go for the field goal, or can Dickinson, on a quick count, get rid of it into the end zone? With no. one try, only taking six or seven seconds. I don't think so because of the 26-yard line. If for whatever reason the receiver gets bumped at the line of scrimmage and he has to hesitate and the ball travel in the air, I think they have to kick the field goal here. And don't forget, we talked about home field advantage. You know, if you've got if you've got the timekeeper here, he's going to want to let it run out. Larson has hit his only field goal of the day. What's up, Mark? 48-yarder. A career best, in fact, for Andy Larson. One more crack at it. I really don't like this, Joel. I really don't. No timeouts left. And he's going to go up the center. He's not in the gun. Trying to get to the sideline. Well executed to Joe Douglas. Valuable yardage to set up the field goal try. The other, even though this is going to come out now at the 37, the other thing that I like about it is that most soccer-style kickers don't like it on the left hash because of the natural hook. That could have been the consideration here because he had already proven, as you pointed out, that he had the leg for that distance. It would have been a 42-yarder. Now it's 37 at the left hash. So Don Reed looking ahead, setting up his place kicker, Andy Larson. Marshall was called a timeout. That is their first of this half with only three ticks left on the clock. And Larson will try to make it a 10-point lead. This is something you don't see much of anymore. Remember in the old days, they always wanted to freeze the kicker with the timeout. More and more, I'm not seeing that as much. Are you? I mean, because you're at the professional level and you, you, know, you see those games. See it occasionally. In fact, this year I've seen two timeouts taken at the end of the half. You can't take them to the locker room with you anyway. Right. So, But I mean with regards to the field goal. I, right. I, I was noticing that at some of the end of the games with game-winning field goals, they haven't even bothered with it anymore to do the freezing part of it. Here's the late hit that set up this field goal drive with a good field position. Onyx to center. Not normally called upon to make tackles. <laughs> that's a very good point. Joel, that's a very good point because inevitably when it's reversed, that's that's one of the reasons why some, so many times you see interception returns for touchdowns because guys on the side of the ball don't want to tackle. So now Larson, a 37-yard attempt. Comes out of the hole of the wide receiver, Larry Tompanelli. 
Will they go to the locker room with a 10-point lead? No, he pulled it. So Marshall gets a break at the end of the half, and the turnover does not cost them three points. We have reached the midway point of the NCAA Division I AA National Championship game. The Grizzlies of Montana looking for their first ever title with a 10-3 lead over Marshall at the break. Back once again to the campus of Marshall University as we continue with the Division I AA National Championship game. I'm Joel Myers, and it was an incredible year for Angelo State All-America Division II linebacker Greg Stokes. Unfortunately, his life would end before he could realize all the goals, the dreams, the accolades he was about to receive. Let's look back now on a life cut short. We join Mike Tirico. At age 23, Greg Stokes appeared to be invincible. The Angelo State senior linebacker dominated opposing defenses, averaging nearly 17 tackles a game this season. He was named an AFCA Division II First Team All-American. Suddenly, scouts, who had previously said Stokes was too small to play in the NFL, well, those scouts started to believe otherwise. This is one that had everything right out in front of him, uh, whether it was success in football, certainly if it was not success in football, uh, after college, he was going to be successful in any walk of life he wanted to go into. But Stokes' bright future quickly faded the morning after an early November loss to East Texas State. The 6'2", 240-pound football star died when he lost control of his Jeep Grand Cherokee and rolled at least four times. The test revealed that Stokes' blood alcohol level was 0.23 more than twice the legal limit. The Rams co-captain's death not only devastated his family and friends, but the small San Angelo community as well. I think every day I don't want to get up in the morning, uh, but I think about him and I think about what he would want me to do, and that's what gets me up and that's what gets me to work and that's what gets me out and talking to people and going out and just trying to enjoy life. Stokes lived life to its fullest, so his family wanted the memorial to be a celebration of his life. Hundreds of people attended the ceremony, which was also broadcast live on television and radio. His death has crystallized life for me and what life really means. And Greg taught me that. And the essence of life is about giving. And uh, if you give, you'll get back. He was such a joy just to watch, even for every play that he did. It was like trying to keep track of a whole team instead of one person because he was all over the field. He was just a leader in the true sense of the word. I mean, he backed up everything that, that he said and, and uh, he, he led by example. Um, uh, one of our players put it best when they said he led by example. Defensive coordinator Mike Martin hopes Stokes' tragic and untimely death may prevent others in the future from making the same mistake. If any, anything good can come out of it, I hope that that's it, that we're not invincible and that, uh, you know, our judgments are, uh, uh, don't need to be impaired and that we uh, think about things before we do it. Linebacker Jason Johns knows that although Stokes is gone, his spirit will never leave. I think the most important thing is that we are here and we still have lives to live and the best thing to do is to go on and do it but i'll never forget greg what he taught me how much he meant to me good afternoon i'm gaston caperton governor of west virginia we are proud that marshall university and the city of huntington are hosts for this 1995 national championship game Marshall University is a nationally recognized leader in preparing students for the 21st century, part of our commitment to excellence in education. We are proud to have one of the most technologically advanced education systems in the country, and that's why many businesses are calling West Virginia home. Our state is not only a great place to live and work, it's a great place to vacation. Whether it's skiing, whitewater rafting, or viewing our scenic wonders, there's something for everyone in West Virginia. Next year, we will be celebrating the best of West Virginia with hundreds of homecoming events chaired by Senator Robert Byrd and country music star Kathy Matea. Enjoy the game. And from all of us in West Virginia, best wishes for a happy holiday season.
led by quarterback Bo Morgan. Morgan! Touchdown! Zebby Lethridge leads the Red Raiders offense, which averages more than 385 yards per game. The next night, December 28th, 19th-ranked Texas A&M faces 14th-ranked Michigan in a Builders Square Alamo Bowl showdown. It's the final college game for future star Leland McElroy. Bianca Batuka's in the house. Touchdown, Wolverines. But Tim Bianca Batuka is just one of many explosive Wolverines. Florida a and and Southern kick off an ESPN triple header December 29th in the Heritage Bowl. This game is a rematch of a high-scoring shootout that saw the Jaguars send the Rattlers scurrying. The second game of our triple header pitched the Big Ten versus the SEC in the Pool and Weed Eater Independence Bowl. Michigan State has been giving opponents fits all season. But LSU's Jamie Howard hopes he can lead the Tigers to the Spartans' line of defense. Colorado State meets 10th-ranked Kansas State in the Plymouth Holiday Bowl to cap off the triple header. The Wildcats have the nation's top-rated defense, but they also pack a punch. He's looking for Lockett, who makes the catch! Touchdown, K-State on the final play of the game! The Rams must match the Cats' defense for defense. On December 30th, East Carolina makes its second straight Liberty Bowl appearance when it meets Stanford. Marcus Crandall averages more than 268 yards a game in total offense. But Cardinal signal caller Mark Butterfield can light it up, too. Later that night, the Peach Bowl matches 18th-ranked Virginia against Georgia. The Cavaliers have experienced the sorrow of a last-second loss. Touchdown! They give it to him. He has one foot in. As well as the thrill of a last-second victory. They say he didn't make it. Virginia's upset Florida State. But Georgia will look to win one last game for Coach Goff. We kick off the new year with Lions and Tigers as 15th-ranked Penn State clashes with 16th-ranked Auburn in the Outback Bowl. Joe Paterno's squad is led by explosive Bobby Ingram. Touchdown, Bobby Ingram! Terry Bowden's troops will look to Patrick Nix and Stephen Davis to bowl over the Lions. Some great matchups still to come in college football with all the bowl games on the horizon. We continue at halftime of the Division One AA National Championship game, and we'll be right back with the plays of the year. Welcome back once again as we continue with the Division One AA National Championship game in Huntington, West Virginia. Well, we're only a couple of weeks away from crowning a national champion in college football. It has been a phenomenal season. No one could have predicted the miraculous run of Northwestern on their way to the Rose Bowl. A suspenseful Heisman race as well. All part of our college football plays of the year.
feet at Memorial Stadium. LaRocca looking for someone to pitch to. No one's there. Gingrich picks it up, and he will be caught. Oh, he's not for the first time and Blanton to throw the blitz is on he's hit fumbles the ball is loose the Spartans kick it ahead to the 30 George Drake will pick it up at the 25 he runs right he's up to the 30 35 40 45 50 45 40 35 30 25 20 he's gonna go all the way are you kidding me <laughs> and Abdul Jabbar is still loose if he gets a couple of blocks, he could do some damage, but he's going to go down at the 30. No, he's still on his feet. Abdul Jabbar at the 30. Abdul Jabbar could go. at the 15. Dreisbach drops to throw. Look and right. Firing for the end zone. Hayes out there. Hayes makes the catch. Was the inbound? Touchdown! He did it! Last play of the game for the third time. You'll know in four seconds who wins it. continue with our halftime activities. Montana leading Marshall 10-3. Come right back to the Division I AA title game after this in Huntington, West Virginia. Welcome back once again to the Division I AA National Championship game. The Grizzlies of Montana took them a while to find the end zone, but they finally got there. They've got a seven-point lead over the thundering herd. And welcome back once again. Joel Myers along with Todd Christensen. We're in Huntington, West Virginia. And Marshall, a very experienced group. They've been in this position before. This is the fourth time over the last five years they've been in the national title game. Surprising to see them making so many mistakes with the yellow handkerchiefs coming out. Penalties really hurting them. Really has been. You know, it's a situation where, as you mentioned, an experienced team, but some of the things have just been egregious mistakes. You know, in the case here, the gentleman is, you know, he's completely out of bounds. Except for, in, th in this case, we get a chance to see the touchdown first. Um, Dickinson to Wells. But, the mis but this, is, this, is where, this is where they're really hurting themselves. Here's the big hit. Thomas decides that he wants to celebrate, gets up. Yeah, look at me, look at me. Well, that costs your team 15 yards. And then after a great defensive stand, Larry Moore comes in and just absolutely creams the punter. I mean, it wasn't even close in that case, Joel. And you got to say to yourself that if this is a team that has been around, they shouldn't be making mistakes like this, and I'm sure the coaches are frustrated. Montana looks for their first ever national championship in football. They've got a seven-point lead as we'll come right back and continue at the half. Ready now for the second half kickoff and the stats almost identical in fact time of possession only six seconds different there and you look at overall numbers as well there's the big stat right there penalties six penalties for 70 yards four big 15 yard penalties joel that's the problem right now the marshals has to overcome they've got to minimize that heading into the second half josh brandon waiting for the second half kickoff now tim openlander so Montana will have the ball to start the second half with a seven-point lead. Open with and Openlander with an outstanding kick. And Brandon will stay right there and slip into the end zone. 
So the Grizzlies first and 10 to their own 20-yard line as we head downstairs, check in with Adrian Carson. Joe, the Montana coaches told me there may have been a turning point in this game with just over a minute to go at the end of the first half that could determine the outcome of this game. They had a lot of momentum. Montana's offense did. As a matter of fact, they didn't want to even uh, take the halftime break and go into the locker room. And adjusting down the second half, Dickinson makes the, his own protection calls for the offensive line. There was some indecision in the first half. The crowd was in the game. He says if they can get them rolling now, take the crowd out of the game, there won't be any more mistakes made up front. All right, Adrian. Well, plenty of breakdowns in that protection. Six sacks in the first half for Marshall. protection there this time and Douglas can't hang on he knew he was going to take the stick from Embry couldn't hang on to it he's got to catch that ball and whatever adjustments that Adrian made reference to certainly look good there for Montana he had a good five seconds to throw Douglas has got to, has to catch that ball that was the key in the semifinal win for Montana as they rolled up 70 points on Stephen F. Austin. He had six, seven seconds every time to throw the ball. Well, one of the issues there, of course, is they're on the mud and the snow, and for defensive linemen, they can't get any kind of traction. Different story here on dry astroturf, or relatively dry. Second and ten. Underneath, it's available for Wells. He'll take it outside of the 26 to the 27. Forced out by Thomas Maxwell. Classic example of Dickinson taking what they gave them on that play. I think he was trying to force some things early on. You're right, Joel. The short out, hopefully that Wells can make a play. He cuts up field, gets some seven yards. Now they've got a situation third and three, much more makeable than, say, third and ten if he forced it downfield. Third and three at the 27. available and he drops it they rushed it but the strong safety was coming on the blitz got smite doesn't matter he still has to catch that ball a little bit behind but wells knows he can catch that ball so montana just the way they started the game three and out with a punt to start the second half and Joel, you know very well that the coaches were saying, the offensive coaches from Montana were saying, don't go three and out. And the defensive coaches from Marshall were saying, that's exactly what we want, and that's what they got. Neil into bunt. Hey, Mikey, where you at? Jim Martin, if he hangs on to it, they should have great field position. They will. He can stay away from us, they'll have great field position. It's going to be in plus territory, in fact, in Montana territory. Just outside of the Grizzlies, 49 for the first possession for Marshall. Well, Dallas Neal with a 13-yard punt in the first half starts the second half with a 22-yard punt. Joel, this is the man that has to get involved. The name that we rarely called in the second quarter was Chris Parker. All-time leading rusher, all-time leading touchdown scorer in the Southern Conference. Of those 11 carries, Joel, only three of them were in the second quarter. Three carries for five yards. They absolutely have to integrate Parker into the offense here in the second stanza. Two-time player of the year in the Southern Conference this year as well as in 1993. Parker on the soft sweep. Does a good job to break the initial contact to get three almost four as we check in once again downstairs with Adrian. Well, Joe, it's as if Todd was in the locker room with me as far as Marshall is concerned at halftime. Two things they figure they have to do if they're going to win this game. First of all, do exactly what they did right there. Get Parker back involved in the game. Whether it runs behind Buck Manning to the right side or some of those other big loads to the left. Secondly, these guys are coming back out with a very reckless attitude. Coach Donna tells me we got to play under control. Being wild is fine, but play under control. That is definitely the key. Second and seven. And trouble for Pennington. Just barely got it away in time. What an alert move by a freshman. Boucher had him wrapped up, ready for a loss. But again, the same thing. You rush for three yards on first down. What makes you think that you got to go to play action on second? If you're a running back, a guy that carries the ball 20, 30, 40 times a game, Joel, you know this. You've got to get into a rhythm. You can't get into a rhythm if you're carrying one time a series. Now they come up third and seven. They're going to have to throw. Boucher almost coming up with the sack. All academic in the big sky for the last couple of years. So now third and long. Third and seven. Pennington with heat is right at the first down marker where he found Theron Todd. He may be about a foot or two short. Justin Hazel with a quick hit. Well, I think in this situation, they'd go for it, even if it is short at the 39-yard line, especially with the big people up front. 
but the one thing that they shouldn't do, as you mentioned when they did it the first time, is toss it. Hand the ball off and see what they can do down there at the 38. The measurement with 13.42 left in the third quarter. Out of field goal range, you'd have to think they are going to go for it. The offense will stay on the field. Javon Darling will bring it to play. Well, Javon Darling, the fullback, has been a complete non-factor in this game. Marshall has gone with a lot of spread formation, and that's surprising to me. I just don't understand why they haven't put him in, run Parker behind him, and say, until it doesn't work, then, then we'll back off. But they haven't done that. Parker is behind Darling. The jumbo formation. Darling, first down, Marshall. As opposed to what we were talking about, what we saw earlier, a toss to Parker on fourth and inches, that makes sense. Well, remember in the first series, too, they did the same thing with Darling, just handed him the ball, and he got the first down. Now he trots to the sideline again. Okay, I did my job. Good push by the offensive line, but Darling, not unlike Parker, has been a relative non-factor, except for those two third and fourth down carries. First down outside of the 36. Wiggins to tight end, the motion man. Parker trying to get the boundary. Decent yardage on first down to the 32. A pickup of just about four. Forced down by the quarterback, Mike Temple. Don't forget this great field position for Marshall's first possession of the second half. Set up because of the play of the special team. Only a 22-yard punt from Dallas Neal. And this is a situation we just mentioned it, Joel. Let's see what they do here. If they go to play action, if they're going to give Parker the ball again. It's a second and six. Last time it was second and seven. See if they try to get it back to number 36. He's the single set. No throw on second and six. The tight end was in the neighborhood. The wide receiver will take it. They've got a first down to the 20. On the reception, Theron Todd, Ricky Carter instead. Marshall was very lucky with regards to this because the tight end actually runs into the route. Tight end is going to cross and come over here, and this is a hook route. Look at all the white shirts, and they're not paying any attention. Take a look, he runs right into the route. All the white shirts right there. Boy, that's threading the needle. Very fortunate for Pennington and Marshall that they didn't get that one picked off. Stumbles on the handoff, but a good win at that. And almost five on first down for Chris Parker. And Pennington barely got it into his bread basket. Sermon on the stop, the outside backer. One of the things that they stress, one of the things that the Marshall coaches stress is they really felt that they could take advantage of the corners from Montana. But I really believe, Joel, that in attempting to do that and take advantage of the corners, that's one of the reasons why Parker's been a non-factor. Second and six, make it second and a short six. Blocks for Parker. Spins his way to the 12. Jason Grebo there, the sophomore from Helena. See, now, if you're Parker, you got to feel good about this. Okay, this is what I wanted to do early on. Give me the ball and let me see what I can do. We'll come up third and two. We've been very successful at short yardage. Let's continue to do this. By far the deepest penetration of the day for the Marshall offensive unit. They're only scoring the first half. A field goal of 39 yards by Openlander. Now they try to tie it up. It's third and two, almost three. Outside of the 12. Darling. Cracked right at the 10 where he needed to go by Boucher. Well, that was a good-looking tackle. I thought he, it, it appeared that he had the first down easily, and then Boucher knocked him backwards. Good play by the inside backer. Turned him sideways, didn't he? he really did. Take a look right here and look at the read that he makes. Now cuts back to the inside, puts... Oh, boy, that's a good-looking tackle. That's how they teach it. That's how they teach it. Helmet between the numbers. So now a fourth and inches situation. I'm surprised they did not ask for a measurement because as we look across the way, it almost looks like he's got the nose of the football for a first down already. Well, then again, that also shows the confidence that they have in their offensive line and runners. That play of the drive. It's Parker. It is going to depend upon the spot. I think he got it. Ryan Thompson getting there first to make the stop. Well, Thompson came in and was able to make the stop initially about a yard behind the line of scrimmage, but the persistence of Parker got it across. I think they got it, Joel. It should be enough on the, on the 10. 
I take take a look Thompson gets in the backfield catches him right there but instead of going down he's able to maintain his footing just enough to lean forward they've got it by the nose of the football this drive started at the Montana 48 the first time that Marshall was started with the ball in Grizzly territory let's take a look at where he where he ends up Okay, Thompson bumps him. Now let's see. Is he down or his legs down on the ground right here? Can you see if his knees are down? Very generous spot for Marshall. Inside of 10 minutes left in the third, first and goal. Parker. Good move. He's in. Touchdown, Marshall. So many times you see it happen, you get lost behind the offensive lineman. That's exactly what happened. He got lost. People assumed that he made the tackle. They slowed down, cuts back against the grade. The penetration is great, but right here he gets lost. Now nobody can find him. Boucher can't find him. Cuts back against the grade. There's nobody left. Touchdown, Parker. Jamie Wilson, with the right tackle out in front. The pursuit was passed. Now to tie things up. Obenbinder does exactly that. Thunder and Hurd have the crowd back in the game. 33, almost 34,000 strong. Parker with the score, and it's tied at 10. More hardware to be handed out later this afternoon as it's tied at 10. National championship game in Huntington, West Virginia. Well, now, finally, everyone saw Parker now. In that last drive of the 11th place, he carried five of them. And, of course, in the stands are kind of saying to themselves, well, yeah, yeah, that's great, but where was that in the first half? more than 35 yards, but I don't think he carried it on consecutive plays in the entire first 30 minutes. No, I agree. Open lander will kick it away. Josh Brandon waits back. He'll take it to the two. Good coverage on the special team. Ryan Lipscomb with a big hit. Big hit. So now Montana, after starting their last series in their own 20, right back near the 20 at the 21. And don't forget, we talked of the mistakes at halftime and the penalties that hurt Marshall in the first half. Not forget about the drops on that first possession of the second half for the Montana wide receivers. That's a very good point. Both Wells and Douglas, arguably their surest hands are the guys that didn't come up with the catches, forced the three and punt the bad field position. the snap to Stenzer root and Jason Grayson brings down the running back Brandon and Brandon not Stenzer root but it looked like it was offside against Marshall yeah it looked like Duncan had a little bit of a head start on that play defense offside five yard penalty still first down I believe it was John Duncan right here at the top of your screen. You're going to see number 96 jump off sides into the neutral zone. Anticipating the count. And, of course, with the shotgun situation, that's a little more difficult. It's going to be a little bit more obvious because it takes the ball longer to get back to the quarterback. First and five now the 26. For the first time, they've got a tight end in, Joel. Mark Bebout, the motion man. The screen, and Douglas can't get to it. We thought we were going to see at least a half dozen screens for the first half alone, and that's what the defensive coordinator, Mickey Matthews, of Marshall was worried about, but it hasn't developed that way. One of the things that's happened here, too, Joel, is because of the pass rush, if you notice Dickinson throwing off his back foot, he's backpedaling, trying to get the ball out, didn't get any juice on it that time. Mickey Matthews has to love the play of his front four. They've put heat on Dickinson since the outset of the contest. Second and five of the 26. Good protection that time, but it batted down. It looked like Billy Lyon may have been the one. It was. Billy Lyon got his hand up. One of the things that happens is that if you don't get generate the pass rush, they tell your defensive lineman, get your hands up. This time they do a great job of blocking Lyon. Look at they keep at the line of scrimmage, double team him. He gets the hand up and bats it down. 
Having a great game today, Joel. Josh Brandon needed help from Zellick on that double beam. So now tied at 10. They're only two of eight so far. This is a third and five. They move the pocket for Dickinson. The quick release and he's got the first down with Matt Wells across the 31. Near the 32. That was really a big pickup for Montana, and I'll tell you why. If you come up first and five and you can't get the first down, that's going to say that would be just an absolute confidence booster for the Marshall defense. I mean, not that they're lacking confidence anyway, but if they'd have held them there first and five, that could have been big, and Montana certainly would be second-guessing themselves going to the sideline. He catches now for Matt Wells, 67 yards, and he's got the only touchdown so far for Montana. collapses good grab waiting for it as Mike Earhart had it thrown just a bit behind him he still got it for the first down one of the things that we've been talking about is you know it's been a theme for Dave Dickinson is he's not big enough and so he just get absolutely crushed anybody that's going to question Dave Dickinson's toughness after today is nuts this is how he's been throwing a lot of passes today right in the face of a rush getting knocked on his backside First down at the 44. Has to get rid of it in a hurry. It's Brandon. And the pickup on first down about five yards to the 49. Four stop by Melvin Cunningham. Cunningham did the smart thing. Had him out of bounds. And as soon as he was out of bounds, backed off. That was a blitz read in that case. The man who was covering <coughs> the man who is covering Brandon in that case came on the blitz. Dickinson gets in the ball immediately, but Cunningham came up to keep it a short game. These receivers can't get lost when I say that. Oh, Wells is only 5'7. Douglas six feet even. Brandon at 5'8. Gales 5'9. They've got some small ones. The delay for Brandon. 49. Ooh, that was close. That was close. Is that Edwards again? Will Edwards along with help from Ricky Hall. Yeah, I was going to say, that was really close. Hall came on the blitz, and if he doesn't make that play, there's a lot, a lot of astroturf for the middle of the field. Another key third down for Montana, but at least now, field position-wise, they've moved it a couple of times. Quarterback draw again. Possibility. He's run the quarterback draw for a first down already. Third and three. Looking for the bundle. And his receiver, Earhart, was bumped. And they say it wasn't a catchable pass. Oh, I don't Cunningham know. Cunningham with contact. Well, I don't know about that. I think Cunningham held him back. You can see that's the beef that the coaches have on the sideline. Take a look at the throw. At the end, Cunningham has him by, has him by the arm, holds him right there and pulls him back. Earhart can't get to it. And of course, the response, they say it's an uncatchable ball, but you never know if the kid isn't going to get there. That was close. That was only three, four yards ahead of him, yeah. even after he was held. Dallas Neal again, he's had his problems. Gets on a much better one. Jump the head of Martin. Would it die inside the five? Yes. What a great kick. Dallas Neal needed it after a 13-yard punt, a 22-yard punt, now comes through with a 51-yard effort, and Marshall in a hole when we come back at the road five. Special teams not exactly a plus so far for Montana, but really coming through in a big way as Dallas Neal just did a 51-yarder and then got it to turn sideways when it hit at the three. It died at the five, and that's where Marshall has it now, the second offensive possession of the second half. Tied at 10, 7.36 left in the third quarter. Chris Parker for only a yard. Boucher and Crebo, the two linebackers in the middle making the stop. Well, Parker's going to have to do some damage now. Two-time conference player of the year, as we had mentioned it. Now do they make the commitment to Parker? On second and nine, from deep in their own territory. Pennington has already been picked off once. And out 
of his own end zone. Here comes the Heat and barely gets it away, and a flag is going to come in for grounding. That's going to be a safety. That's going to be a safety, Joel. He did it in the end zone. That's going to be a safety. Ryan Toon, the junior from Butte, Montana, in the face of the quarterback. We got intentional grounding. Penalty enforced from the end zone. We've got a safety. Montana takes the lead with a huge play from their defensive unit. And, Joel, you called it earlier that the youngster had done such a great job of throwing the ball away earlier. This time, it's just way too obvious. You mentioned the pressure right in his face. Take a look here. He double clutch. Oh, I'm going to get sacked. Okay, I'm just getting rid of it. Nobody is even close to that football. The official right on top of it. Great pressure by the Grizzlies. And once again, I got to second guess the play calling of Marshall. We just talked about Parker. Had a great series before. You're on your six-yard line. What do you think? here backing up into the end zone. I, I don't get it. Parker had been effective, but they decided to throw it on second and nine and give those two points to Brian Toon and Randy Riley. They were right in the face of the quarterback, so now Montana will get the ball back after the punt coming up from the 20. For the thundering herd of Marshall, well, coming up right after Christmas on ESPN, and of course, it's Thrifty Car Rental Bowl Week. Eight great bowl games, five days. It all starts December 27th. The Wiser Lock Copper Bowl begins it all. Texas Tech taking on Air Force. That'll start at 8 o'clock Eastern on the 27th. We'll finish it all off in Tampa on New Year's Day with the Outback Bowl. Penn State and Auburn with blooming onions for everyone. 12-10 lead for Montana. Inside of seven minutes left in the third. So now let's see if there's been a shift in the momentum back to Montana because it seemed like the crowd was back into it. And Marshall, after that drive of 48 yards for the tying score, had all of a sudden seized that opportunity. And now a bad punt, Joel. It's going to be a fair catch called for by Ileu Kani, the young man, a redshirt freshman from Honolulu, and a smart play to call the fair catch at your own 46. It really was because even though he did have a little bit of room to run, he has no idea what's in front of him. Now, great field position for Montana. And, Joel, as you mentioned, I thought that was a very cogent point that you made with regards to momentum. If Montana goes on to win this game, I would guess that they're going to look back at that one play as maybe being the biggest play in the game. Now they've got super field position. Call it the 45. Wells the motion now. Moving the pocket a little bit once again. Dickinson has all day. Good coverage go downfield. And he's going to be put down by B.J. Cohn. It'll be another sack. It's a loss of a yard. And Joel, that was man-for-man -man coverage all over the field. So you've got to give Marshall an awful lot of credit. He buys time. Dickinson does a great job of buying time for his receivers, but they just cannot get open. Marshall is just doing a great job of covering them. In that case, Joel, that had to be a good six to eight seconds. Couldn't find any white shirts open. Scrambles out again. Thinks he has a shot upfield. And once again, there's B.J. Cohen. Seven sacks for Marshall. Second and 11 underneath. It's complete with the midfield stripe to Earhart, the junior from Eugene, Oregon. Larry Moore brings him down immediately. That's a name that we haven't called very much, Joel, and I'm surprised. It's 6 4 205. I would have thought this was a guy that was going to have a big day against the secondary of Marshall, but with the exception of the one post pattern that Cunningham had batted down earlier in the first half, we haven't called his number. Now a huge third down for the Marshall defensive unit. Can they stop him? third and five of the midfield stripe after great field position to start it all off here for Montana. Plenty of time for Dickinson and overshooting Wells. can't ask for much more from the Thundering Hurts defensive unit. You really can't. I mean, given the circumstances there, a safety, momentum has gone the other direction, and they hold the most potent offense in one double-A here to three and out. Boy, it's just a great job by Marshall, the defense. And that, my friend, is not a good sign for Marshall, mentioning defense, if their big stud, Billy Lyon, is going to be on the turf. As his defensive coordinator, Mickey Matthews, told us, he will play at the next level if he chooses to in the NFL. He's 6'5", 290. He is a super pro prospect. He's only a junior from Erlanger, Kentucky. Another 
another look, Todd. Right here in the middle, let's take a look and see what happens to him as he cuts up field. Once again, he's on the loop to the outside. Look at that, he's, there he slips right there. His knee a little bit folds under him. In fact, it folds under him twice. That's the difficulty of AstroTurf. Set downstairs, join Adrian Carson once again. Adrian? Joe, here's the situation. Right in Billy Lyon, we encapsulize the situation on the defensive line for Marshall. They are having a pass rush almost every single play now. You get tired, you slow down, you get hurt. They're going to have to start rotating or replacing players on the defensive line, which means Montana may have them, whatever they want them as far as the passing game is concerned. You know what, Adrian? That's a very good point. And as I watched the pass rush of Lyon in that case, and maybe you would agree with me, it looked to me that that was one of those fatigue things. He didn't get hurt. He just slipped. His feet came out from under him, and that's when his knee folded underneath him. Yeah, Todd, he's just not getting low enough and having that charge he did in the first and early second quarter. Starting to wear down that front four. Dallas Neal just hit a beauty of 51-yarder. Tim Martin waits at the 10. High, but much shorter this time. Martin stays away from it, and it takes a grisly roll and a big-time roll inside the 20. Down to the 15, so Marshall again deep in their own territory. First and 10 of the 15 when we come back as they trail it by two. Grizzlies of Montana looking for their first Division One AA championship, and they've got a two-point lead now as the thundering herd of Marshall has it deep in their own territory back at the 15. Division One AA playoff record attendance over 32,000 on hand, standing room because the stadium only holds 30,000. Joel Myers, Doc Christensen, Adrian Karsten on a magnificent afternoon in West Virginia. Good to have you with us for this national championship game as Parker gets the call, and Parker with good yardage on first down, almost five. One of the things I was talking with Chris Selfo, the offensive coordinator for Marshall, is that I said, you know, there's got to be a lot of pressure on you because of last week. I just don't think there's any way that 25 points is going to cut it. Well, I turned out to be wrong. 25 points could be a winner today, Joel. No one could have anticipated a low-scoring affair and probably the Montana Grizzlies after they outscored their first three playoff opponents, 163 to 14. Pennington on second and five out of the shotgun. Underneath, he's got it close to the marker to Mark Wicks, the sophomore from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. And Grebo there to wrap him up. It may be about a half a yard shy. You know what? It's interesting to me, Joel, that the second down calls almost exclusively have been throws. Very curious, and I wonder if that's one of those situations that possibly they had scripted. You know, that becomes very popular now amongst offensive coordinators wanting to script specific things. Thought you were about to say almost exclusively and excluded Parker. So now third, less than a yard. Will it be Darlene or Parker? Parker. And what penetration. But Parker won't quit on the that's play. That's a great effort. I think he's a little bit short, but that's a great effort on the part of Parker. It looks like he's going to be short. Finally put down by Sermon. Well, he needed to get to the 26. It's fourth down. They've got a punt. The offense obviously wants to stay on the field, but it's only a two-point ball game. Well, Montana's penetration is impressive. One of the things that, they, that Marshall has to do next time they get in that situation, every single time they've come up, they've gone in a quick count. So Chris Hansen will punt it away now. Joe Douglas waits back at the 35. with a staggered count at the line. They were hoping to get we the offside. Of the game against the offense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. And combining the people going in motion, Joel, you're absolutely right. They wanted to get them drawn up. One of the things that they have done almost exclusively on the third and fourth down and short is go on a quick count. They did that this time. Montana did a great job of anticipating that quick count. That's what I wanted to mention earlier, Joel. That's why they were able to get the penetration that they did. More than five times the penalty yardage. They've tripled the actual number of penalties, but more than five times the yardage up against Marshall. Hanson wobbles it out. Douglas doesn't call for the fair catch. Makes a nice move to get into the midfield stripe. Getting away from the first man, and he'll take it. 
down to the 49. Only a 35-yard punt from Chris Hansen. And Joe, one of the things that you had talked about, you made a very astute point. The special teams have been leaning heavily towards Marshall in the first half. Now, all of a sudden, the special teams are starting to lean more and more towards Montana. Now, the last time, Todd, Montana had the ball in this position. They just went three and out after the safety from their own 45. And how much how much more can you ask of this Marshall defense, Joel? Once again, they got the guys lined up three together. This is where they this is where they ran the ball up the middle when they had that formation last time. Dickinson with time underneath. It's Earhart. He's got a first down inside the 40 to the 39, and we head downstairs to Adrian going to retape the right angle of Billy Lyon, who sprained on the earlier uh, series there when we were talking about the uh, fatigue of the defensive line guys. They're going to get him back in the game as quickly as they can. I am told that he's just going to have to go with it. They need his physical presence, certainly, and his psychological leadership back in there. All right, thank you, Adrian. Slipped on that tainted portion of the midfield area, unfortunately, and happened without a blocker right in front of him. Yeah, this isn't a situation, I mean, one of the great cliches is there is no tomorrow. Well, in this case, this is it. This is the game, and Lions going to have to stick it out. Hopefully, he can deal with the pain. 166 so far for Dickinson. I got to tell you, though, Joel, he has shown me more today than he did in those games where he blew people out. He has shown a lot of courage, a lot of guts, a lot of resilience. First and 10 of the 39 of a thundering herd. The delay for Brandon. And good yardage by Brandon. Another first down to the 27. Brought down by Spike in the secondary. Adrian mentions the physical presence of, of Lyon. Take a look at the middle. There are it's one less big body. They have to pass rush now instead with Ricky Hall, who is normally a fullback. That's not the same as having your six foot six, 280-pound run stopper in there. Six carries for 33 yards for Brandon. They need to get Lyon back in there if he can go, but it is, as Adrian said, a twisted ankle. Dickinson has Earhart under throw to the intercepted. Grayson comes up with it. And Earhart was available. You can see the irritation of Dickinson, and the reason for that is because he has absolutely nobody else to blame. Take a look. The fullback does a great job picking up the blitzer. He's got man-for-man -man coverage on the corner. The ball wobbles a little bit, thrown very much underneath. And as a result, able to cut in front is Grayson. Dickinson has, as I say, you know, he can't complain. The rush wasn't in his face. Plenty of time, just made a bad throw. So like a good punt. Marshall is deep in their own territory once again. Huh? That's not the way Dickinson's looking at it, though. Turnover is even now. One of these. Parker spinning barely back to the line. Maybe a half yard of the most. And a good, good penetration by the defensive front of Montana. One of the things that stands out to me here, Joel, is that neither offense seems to be terribly patient. The score is 12 to 10. There's a lot of time left. There's over 16 minutes left of football. But all of a sudden, trying to force things has cost both teams. Recall earlier in this same situation, Pennington faded back to pass, had the safety. There's a situation where instead of throwing the ball underneath or maybe running, he tries to force the ball and get the interception. Both offenses have to be more patient, Joel. Last time Marshall faced this situation, Pennington threw the ball and was throwing the ball away and forced into a safety. Now, second and ten from the six, he has changed the play and a dead ball foul coming up against the offense. That is now the tenth penalty against Marshall. Again, again, this falls under the heading of a freshman mistake, and that is you're on your own five-yard line. We're not trying to get big chunks of yardage here. We're just trying to get out of there. Hand the ball to Parker. Okay, if you got a punt, so what? Your defense is playing well. On the offense, half the distance to the goal, still set it out. As you mentioned, the young quarterback trying to audible it at his own five-yard line, it's just not a good decision. A year ago, he was playing high school football and starting for his team at Knoxville, Tennessee. Now he's playing for a national championship for the Thundering Herd of Marshall University. 
you know, Joel, you asked me, he said, hey, what were you doing at this time of year? Remember that? Playing hoops, he said. <laughs> Last year, he was playing hoops for his high school team. Back to the three. It's second and 13. The completion. Ricky Carter spins close to the first down, but he's a yard short. 12 on the reception. And Mike Temple was thinking interception there. And if you, in this situation, if you're going to go for the pick, you've got to go all out to get it. He didn't. And as a result of that, that's where the completion came. Now will they get the playoff in time, or will it be the final play of the third quarter? That will be the final play of the third. So when we come back to start the fourth quarter, it'll be third and a little more than a yard for the thundering herd of Marshall. So are only down by two. End of three at the Division I AA National Championship game in Huntington, West Virginia. Montana clinging that two-point lead. We start the fourth and final minutes of 15 minutes of regulation. It's been a tough day for Dave Dickinson, the quarterback for the Montana Grizzlies, a record-setting quarterback during his career there. Just picked off. Marshall has it back. And now do we see a quick count on third and left with a yard for Pennington? Yes. The toss. The call. Parker's got the first down. Taking it to the 18. Primo brings him down. That's a good call. You got to shake things up. Last time, of course, the penetration of the Grizzlies forced him into a kicking situation that they didn't want. Now, all of a sudden, they go to the outside and they get it. Interesting stat here. We talked about getting him the ball more, but you got to give a lot of credit once again to the Montana defense. That's only three yards to carry, Joel. Who would have figured that in Montana? can hang on and win his first ever national championship. It was sparked by their defensive unit. The fake by Pennington. Trying to set up the screen on the opposite side. It's dropped by Parker, and he's got it. He's got room to roll. Heat from Randy Riley. Flag is down, Joel. Back inside the 20. I think the argument here is to whether or not he was downfield. The illegal man downfield. Yeah, of course he has to be he has to be behind the line of scrimmage there. And if it was Buck okay. Manning, the left guard, you just can't miss him. How much does he weigh? Well, they post him at 360, but that was the media guide, which was printed about eight months Inhalable, ago. Eligible downfield on the offense, five-yard penalty, still play first down. Now I'm not sure. You know what, Joel? I'm not sure I take that penalty. I'm really not put the young quarterback in a situation where he only ha he has to make 10 yards in two plays. There's the big man that you're talking about. And you know what? That's pretty decent feet. That's pretty decent feet for a man that size. And, and I am not going to get in his way. Whoa! 6'6", 360. A little bit larger than that now. We haven't seen a split backfield all that often. And Thomas is going to get it. And Thomas loses it and Montana comes up with it. The Grizzlies get the ball. Manzanares with the recovery. Eric, the sophomore from Great Falls, Montana. Joel, this is a game that Eric Thomas is going to want to forget. This is the young man, remember, earlier had the taunting 15 yards, dropped what looked could have been a sure touchdown. Krebo, the man who has been making plays for him all year, strips the ball from Thomas. Now Montana set up a great situation. Thomas, it's just been a really long day for this young man. you got to feel badly for him. And it was Eric Manzanares, not Johansi, who starts at the left end, but Eric, who's the backup at left tackle, who comes up with the fumble recovery. 20-yard line. First down for Dickinson. And here comes he. And Hickens. Dickinson gets away. Another spin by Dickinson. I can't believe it. He gets almost five yards on the play. Did that, does that remind you a little bit of Roger Staubach? That's what it looked like to me in his early years with the Dallas Cowboys when the guy was all over the field, although his physique is more like Brant Arkadon. Look at him buying time, and look how many guys he makes miss. You're right, it looked like he was sacked right there by Duncan, but he spins out. Now coming up in the secondary, it looks like he's going to get whacked. No, he's able to cut and avoid Summers. Now he cuts back another 360. Wow. <laughs> that was fun to watch. He's not out of breath, though. Here he goes on second, and a long five, almost six. This would be a good opportunity for him to go to a running play simply because of the fact that he's got to be out of breath, Joel. Give it to somebody else and let them run. I 
don't think he's calling a quarterback draw. 13-38 and counting left of the contest. Montana leading by two, looking for more. Dickinson has his man. in Douglas inside the five, first and goal number two. We've been talking, Joel, about them exploiting the middle of the field because they only have the one backer. That time, that's exactly what they did. Douglas comes across right here in the middle, and he is going to settle down. You can see there's the one backer and the two safeties. Everybody gets run off, and Douglas is going to come from the left of your speed and just sit down right in the middle. There he is right in the middle of the field. The other people run people into the end zone. He does a great job of running after the catch. Now Kelly Stenzer, the senior from Missoula, Montana, setting up in the backfield, but a timeout has been called by Marshall. Timeout that is their Marshall. first of the second half. We will take a timeout as well. 13-11 left, 12-10 Montana. Eric Thomas on the sideline after committing that fumble. Now all of a sudden, first and goal at the two for Montana, only hoping that one of his defensive teammates can scrape the ball away from the Grizzlies. You see by those numbers, it's not as if he hasn't done anything coming in, Joel. Stenzer root on first and goal. Stop. Just inside the two. Not much there. Smythe and Stump combining for that stop. We had it down to Adrian Marston. Joel, more mistakes by Marshall inside the five-yard line here where a touchdown for Montana could be huge, maybe mean the game. They had to call a timeout. Marshall did because they had 12 men on the field. Not sure who was supposed to be replacing whom. Well, Swafford came running off, but Swafford and McLeod have not seen that many snaps because of the 4 one six that Marshall has had to employ today. Now Brandon, the only one in the backfield. They spread the defense with three wideouts. Dickinson keeps it. Touchdown! His wide receiver, Matt Wells. Matt Wells gets the touchdown, but Dickinson's the guy that made the play. Almost getting sacked, he moves his speed a little bit, is able to throw the ball in the end zone. Boy, this is a great play by Dickinson and heads up. That's the saddest man on the field right now. So Matt Wells with his second touchdown reception of the afternoon. Huge extra point here, Joel, huge. If they make the extra point here, that means that Marshall has to score twice. Andy Larson gets into it. And it is a nine-point lead. So Larson comes through with the clutch. 19 to 10 now, Grizzlies. Misdirection, he, he, he fakes the counter. Brandon comes to the outside. Now he's about to get sacked. Take a look, he buys time, but there's nobody there. He avoids the sack, buys the time, enables Wells to come back to him. Boy, that's a great job by the quarterback. Brian Stump looks like he might have it. That's the swirl route Come in. Now watch, watch him come back against the grain. There he is wide open. But the man who bought the time for him was the quarterback, Dickinson. And for you young people out there, and for you parents who might be watching this game and you think that your kids are too small to play football at the collegiate level, Wells is what? You said 5'7", 155? And that is soaking wet. Yeah, yeah, that is. So it's a senior from Ashland, Oregon, first team all big sky and the all-time reception and yardage leader in Grizzly history. And Marshall total offense way below what they've been averaging so far this season. Now they will get it back with Parker waiting along with Eric Thomas who just caught the ball up leading to that decisive go-ahead score. It was already a two-point lead for Montana but now it's a two-score game. Todd mentioned an extra point so critical. Take it from an eight-point advantage up to nine points for Montana. Another very short kick. They better corral this one in a hurry. And P.J. Summers again, looking for blocking. And doing a good job. The defense are back across the 40 to the 45. It's a great field position for Marshall as they play catch-up. Don't forget, coming up at midnight tonight, Eastern on ESPN2, College Hoops, Ball State, taking on the running Rebels, UNLV. They've got a brand new coach in Vegas. See what they look like so far this season. That is at midnight Eastern, 9 o'clock out on the West Coast, Ball State, the Cardinals, taking on the Rebels. 12.23 left. Pennington out of the shotgun on first and 10. Wide open. First down, Marshall with the 43. 
Nobody close that time as finally Boucher came over. When Montana goes back in their zone, they just made no accounting for Wiggins, who just settles down in the middle of the field. Take a look at number 89. He's going to do what they call a squat route, where he just squats down in the middle. No white shirts at all. That's an absolute gimme. Almost lost the ball there at the end. And this is where that short kickoff is going to come back to haunt them. There's 12 minutes left in the game. Plenty of time for Marshall to score twice. Chris Parker, Marchenka. The other running backs in there now. Orlandis Gary's first carry of the day. And he broke tackles down to the 37. He's a sophomore from Washington, D.C. He was third on the team in rushing this year with a little over 500 yards. Joel, inevitably this happens to an offense, and that is, is that throughout the, way, throughout the game they've been playing a certain way. Now down nine points, there's a bit more of a sense of desperation. We've got nothing to lose. They let things hang out, and it, it, at least it appears so far for Marshall to be effective in this drive. Gary stays in there. Parker stays on the sideline. He's got the tight end Wiggins again. And Wiggins takes it to a first and goal with a face mask call at the end. They'll take it half the distance. It'll be first and goal to the three. The misdirection by Marshall and then throwing back against the grain with Wiggins is what's effective. Take a look right here. Here's Wiggins right here coming down. Now he settles down. The direction was going every place, everything to the left. Now there's nothing but white shirts on the left side of the field. There you can see the face mask at the end as he pulls him down. Wiggins has been a major factor here. And what's surprising to me, Joel, coming into this game, he was the leading receiver for Marshall. How can they continue to let him go unabated like that? Shouldn't be a surprise. So down to the three. It didn't take long for Marshall to take it from their own 45 to the three. B.J. Summers set it up with a good return on the short kickoff. Well, as we mentioned, as I mentioned, Joel, it's a sense of desperation now. There's no reason to be concerned with they've got to score twice. And, and, and I really think that for whatever reason, they've got to do something else in terms of their kickoff. That's really hurt. Orlando Gary losing a yard as they knocked him out of bounds at the four. They'll give him the three. Mike Temple forcing him to the boundary. Gary, the all-time leading rusher in Maryland high school history. Only a sophomore. Marshall certainly wants to punch this in here. I'd like play action here with the tight end of the corner. Listen to my partner, Doug Christensen. Well, they've gone out of their short yardage spread. They've got Chris to the wide side of the field. And they run Gary and he didn't fool Montana at all. Stop completely. Ryan Thompson, the first one in there. Joe, let me explain to you why I like play action on second down. It's because everybody's expecting it on third. Everybody knows that you've got to do it third down if you're at about the four-yard line. Now you've got a situation where they're forced to do it. You do it on second down, it could be run or pass. You can fool some people. Ryan Thompson, only a junior. Played his high school football for a former Grizzly in Missoula. As slow-footed as he is, this would be a great time for quarterback draw to Pennington. Third and goal. Going for Martin, poked away. Blaine McElmurray. See, I really hate that call. You're at the short side of the field. It just doesn't make any sense there. And even though they're down by nine in this situation, they do need the field goal anyway, so this is the time to kick it. I will say this too, Joel. Even though they're kicking the field goal, got to be a little momentum back to Montana for that stand. First and goal at the three, and they don't get the touchdown. Only field goal attempt today for Openlander. He hit a 39-yarder. Now a little more than an extra point by a 21-yarder is up. And it's good. So Marshall is back within a score. Only down by six after the Openlander field goal. It's 19-13. Maybe the biggest surprise for all of us on first and goal of the three. Chris Parker was on the sideline, and all of a sudden, Orlando's Gary into the backfield for his first carries of the day. Now, Gary did have that one previous carry before they got to the three, but interesting that Parker is the one they told us runs like a 225 to 230-pound back, even though he only goes at about 200 pounds. Some very curious choices have been made with regards to the man who's the all-time leading Southern Conference rusher and touchdown maker. 
So now Openlander into the kick it away. Josh Brennan, the single one back deep inside the five for Montana. Six-point ball game. Joel Myers, Scott Christensen, and Adrian Karsten in Huntington, West Virginia. Classic football weather. It is absolutely perfect. Hard to believe it would be this warm in December. Amazing. special teams coverage. That just goes to show how important this game is now. On kickoff coverage, you have your big play receiver. That's amazing. And Brandon barely getting up. He was chopped down around the ankle. Field position so important right now for Marshall. Down by a six. They needed that stop before a big return. Take a look from the side. You're going to see Martin. Here's the, here's the kick. Now, coming from the right of your screen, there you see number one, Martin, coming in. He comes in untouched, hits him right at the thigh of his knee, it, a little bit of a wobble there. Hopefully that's just a sprain. But you know if they block, you know what? They had a pretty good looking wedge there. If Martin doesn't make that tackle, he might go a little ways. So now it's up to the thundering herd defensive unit without Billy Lyon, who had been their leader over the first almost three quarters. So went down with a twisted ankle and has not returned. the 30 to the 31. Ricky Hall bringing down the running back. So Brian Gales, a redshirt freshman from Richland, Washington, with his first activity of the afternoon. Jason Grayson is angry with himself, but he actually makes a pretty decent play. If he doesn't come out there and at least slow him down a little bit, they get a lot more yards than that. That could have been a very, very big play. You see the numbers by Dickinson. That's after a 5 for 16 start, so in that case, the numbers could be deceiving. The one thing, though, Joel, that Montana has not been able to do today, they have not been able to keep possession of the ball. This is very big in terms of time possessions because if they don't get a couple of first downs here, 9.48, not only is that time to get the ball back and score, that's plenty of time for Marshall to get two field goals and tie this thing up. They're short by inches for the first down, and what you're alluding to is what they did to Stephen F. Austin first half of their win where they won it 70 to 14 you would think there was a ton of big 80 and 90 yard plays well they dinked them to death there were short passes throughout the first half so and there were long drives they took a lot of time off the clock of the first half with those little short passes now because they don't run the ball all that effectively can they go with the five to seven eight yard passes and keep them inside the boundary second of the yard the 40 all the way to the 42 tripped up by bj summers fresh you know, wheels in the game now i was about to say you know both teams have 60 men on their squad as opposed to as the 1a level where you have over 100 and a lot of cases they're always talking about depth well this is a game we're letting it all hang out everybody seems to be playing special teams offense defense and of course gales has to be saying why did you get me in earlier come on i'm producing he ran track in high school displayed it there with that quick sprint up the middle Douglas on the completion of the midfield stripe. Eight yards on first down as we join Adrian Carson once again. Joel, interesting situation behind the bench here on the Marshall side. The defensive unit was sent back into the game in this series with the instructions to tackle the ball. Well, if that's the case, usually what happens is you wind up arm tackling, not wrapping up. Montana's going to just keep picking up yards. Adrian, that's a very good point, and especially at, at this issue, I really feel like that with nine minutes left in the game, they don't necessarily have to have a turnover. They just have to force them to kick. they got plenty of time. Six-point lead for Montana, looking for their first-ever Division I AA National Championship. They heat the pressure. Dickinson didn't have a choice. Embry on an all-out blitz. <laughs> I don't like that call. I like the ball, call of going back to Gales. You got second and two. Now you just throw an incomplete pass. You stop the clock. That play only took two seconds. 
because even if even if they don't get the first down, at least they blow off in the 25, 30 seconds. I remind you that Dickinson calls his own protection, his own line play. So now third and a couple. As well as he runs, you got to like him just rolling out someplace, moving the pocket. They are moving the pocket for Dickinson. Will he run for it? He'll throw for it, and Earhart grabs it. He's got a first down to the 38. That's a big catch, and that was behind him. Those were the balls that, remember, early in the second half were dropped. That ball's a little bit behind him. Earhart with the big body, able to come back and make the catch. Take a look here to the right of the screen. He's going to throw just a little bit behind Earhart, but he makes sure he gets it right there. Well, that's a, that's a good-looking catch. Fourth reception of the afternoon for Mike Earhart, the junior from Eugene, Oregon. 40 yards in receiving. down at the Marshall 38. Flanker screen. A little kick play. And Earhart takes it inside the 35 to the 33. Well, we had mentioned that we didn't hear much from Earhart in the first half. Evidently, not that they're paying attention to us, but they've certainly picked him out now. Five receptions for 45 yards. The yards might not be that big a deal, but the catches have been big. Almost all of them seem to have been for first downs. Second and five. Here comes Heat on Dickinson, and they put him right out of field goal range. The corner blitz, Jason Grayson. got to get rid of that one. And what's interesting about that, Joel, it was right in his face. He just didn't see him. He flat out did not see Grayson. Grayson, Grayson is going to come right in his face right there. And he doesn't see him right there. He's got the hook pattern wide, wide open. But he doesn't see it until too late. Grayson puts him down. Sack number eight. A loss of nine, bringing up third and 14. Now, if they can't get the first down, you've got to think about a field goal that could put them up on more than a touchdown once again. They need to get to the 30, Joel, to get, get in range. Dickinson with heat. Can't get away. DJ called the first one in there. Help from Edwards. B.J. Cohen is not a name that we thought we'd be calling a lot of, but he's been making play after play after play. It broke, there was a breakdown in the protection in the middle. They had white shirts there, but they just didn't touch him. Cohen with another sack. Dallas Neal and a punt it away. Jim Martin waits outside of the 10. No pressure. Off the side of the foot of Neal. Takes a Marshall roll, close to the 24. Only a 26-yard punt. We'll come right back to see if Marshall can take the lead with 6.24 left. The drop by Dallas Neal on the punt is one of the reasons why it was so ineffective. You can see he's not very happy about it. Watch when he catches it and watch the drop if we can slow it down and, and stop it right, he, right here. Watch. Look at the ball. Bananas. Now it's sideways. Not only is it sideways, but the laces are on the bottom. And that's what he kicks. And that's the reason why that punt was so ineffective. Only a 26-yarder to set it up now for Marshall instead of deep in the road territory. They're at the 24. And Joel, you made a very astute point with regards to the fact that the special teams of Montana throughout the playoff have not been called upon to make any kind of big plays. It certainly shows. Pennington out of the shotgun with pressure coming. Buy some time. Jim Martin was there. Poorly thrown ball. It really was. Tough throw across your body, but that's one he certainly could have made. Don't forget, coming up next on ESPN, it is going to be the U.S. Alpine Skiing Championships. That is right after our national championship game in Huntington, West Virginia. Now second and ten. Marshall running out of time. 6.19 remaining. Only two timeouts left. Don't forget, they had to use that timeout for defensive purposes. Pennington, there's Wiggins, his favorite target today, the tight end. He's going out of bounds short the first down. Where will they mark it? Boucher held on until help was on the way. It's across the 31. 
coming up about third and four here. Because of what they're doing now, they're going with a lot of zone. The Grizzlies are. This is a good opportunity for Marshall to run a draw play. Fifth catch of the day for Jermaine Wiggins, the leading receiver, coming to the contest. What's impressive is that yards per catch. You usually don't see tight ends very much over about 10 yards. That's 16 a grab. That's impressive. And now Pennington is going to have to use a timeout. So on third and almost four, we'll find out what Marshall comes back with out of the break with only 6.13 remaining in the game. Thundering hurt of their fans running out of time, and they only have one timeout remaining now with 6.13 left. They come to a third and four at their own 31. 19-13 lead for Montana. Pennington has Martin for the first down. He's across the 35. Where will he get the spot? He's got it. Yeah, he first got the, down, Marshall. Got the forward motion. You're right. I was interested in that situation that they didn't have Jermaine Wiggins in the game. He'd been their big catch guy. Certainly the guy that can catch the ball in the middle of the field, but they opted for Martin there. Clutch catch. Clock is rolling. They need to travel 65 yards. Google doesn't do Marshall any good as they look for their second national championship. The first came in 1992 with a three-point win over Youngstown State. Pennington eludes the pressure and throws it away. It came from Randy Riley, and we've been talking about the way that Jerome Sowers, the defensive coordinator, is now bringing in over the last 10 to 15 minutes of the game extra bodies up front tune and riley in fact created the safety and i think this is a situation where pennington ought to just forget the idea of throwing across his body that's the second time now in this series alone where it's been ineffective there's the defensive coordinator for the grizzlies his group has done an outstanding job all afternoon second and ten of the 35. for 16 yards and a first down. That's a great play for anybody, freshman or senior. The ball gets stripped from him there from the backside. He picks it up just as he's about to get sacked. He has the wherewithal to get the ball downfield. Todd with a huge catch. Ryan June thought he had another sack. Pennington got rid of it just in time, though. First down, Marshall. Complete looking for Ricky Carter. Jerome Sowers changed up there. He had Creeble coming on the blitz from the inside, and he got right into the lap of Pennington. This is where the chess match occurs, or in this case, Chris Selfo for Marshall and Jerome Sowers for Montana. Is it even going with the zones almost primarily? Now, all of a sudden, he comes with a blitz in a short passing situation. Can't afford to be predictable. Got to let it all hang out, Joel. Well, keep him in the shotgun, and now Chris Parker back into the game. Pennington hit as he releases. Has Martin. There goes Martin inside the 30 for another first down. 22 yards on that catch. Pennington under some duress, the pass rush is right on top of him, but he's able to get it off just before Falls puts him to the ground. And again, the soft zone coverage, Martin able to make the adjustment and almost breaks through, gets a couple of broken tackles down to the 26-yard line. Marshall in business. Pennington not the shotgun this time on first down outside of the 26. Well, they can run the ball, Joel. Plenty of time. It is Parker on the delay.
extra excessive celebration. Can't blame him, though. It'll come on the kickoff. Could be, but it's going to be costly. We got a dead ball, unsportsmanlike, on the scoring team. The happiest man in the stadium right now, Eric Thomas. The young man who fumbled the ball back at his own 20. And Montana took it in to go up at that time, 19 to 10. Now a huge extra point for Tim Openlander. And they are not going to do it on the ensuing kickoff. Instead, it is going to go on the extra point try. Well, now that's this is interesting because this is this is no gimme, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a 35-yard extra point. But now the question you have to ask yourself: Did Marshall do the job too well? Because now with four minutes and 45 seconds, it's going to be Dave Dickinson's turn to take the lead. Down the middle it goes. Marshall has. all day about the fact that Parker has been a non-factor. We said that the draw play would work, and there it is. He cuts to the outside. Everybody in kind of a pass rush situation, but the tacklers there are non-existent. Look at all the tackles that Parker breaks on his way to the end zone. An impressive piece of running for a youngster who up to this point, Joel, had really been a non-factor. So now the pressure on the record-setting senior quarterback as Pennington showed his school, especially when the ball was swiped away from him. And then he got it back and hit Todd for a 16-yard completion. Well, there's something appropriate about Parker scoring this touchdown too, Joel, and that's this. That we talked at the outset about great players making plays, and they're dependent upon their big studs. Here he comes through for his team. Now it's incumbent upon Dickinson to do the same for his. We couldn't understand why Parker wasn't on the field that entire possession when they had it first to go to the three. We thought, well, did he turn an ankle? We didn't receive word. Obviously, help was not a problem. And now, Brian Gales, because of the injury to Josh Brannon, will go back on the kickoff return. Oakenlander moves it away. It'll be back at the three. Gales. Barry, short of the 20. That was Wiggins on the tackle, the tight end. We mentioned before the fact that their offensive players on coverage. They're really letting it all hang out. We don't have just a triple header for you today on ESPN. How about four basketball games coming your way? Seton Hall, Ohio State starts it off at 4 o'clock Eastern. Then Louisville on the road at Georgia Tech at 7.30. We'll all be followed by Cal and Minnesota. The wrap-up, midnight Eastern, 9 o'clock on the West Coast, Oregon, and Fresno State. First and 10, Montana at the 20, down by a point. They still have all three of their timeouts remaining. Don't forget, moving the pocket is Dickinson. Douglas, breaking the tackle, gets the first down. Just across the 30. Larry Moore barely tripped him up. But Montana isn't really in a hurry here with 4.33 in the clock running. This is exactly, you know, this is exactly what we had hoped for, Joel. Marshall's defense outstanding. Montana's offense outstanding. This is what it comes down to now, the crucial part of the game. National championship game doesn't get any better. They had to work with a tiebreak formula the other night on ESPN in the Toledo-Nevada game. We may not have that situation here with a one-point ball game. First down for Dickinson. Underneath he goes. He's got Douglas again. And Douglas has another first down. Larry Moore catching up with him. I can't emphasize enough, Joel, the fact that when you play with a certain amount of desperation as opposed to being conservative, you notice that this is the same offense that had struggled when they were ahead. It's as if they couldn't stand prosperity. Now, all of a sudden, they're down by a point. They've got to make things happen, and, what, and that's exactly what is happening. 420 and counting left of the game. Eight catches from Douglas, 95 yards. Junior from Santa Morgan. the blitz will they back off no they're coming dickinson in trouble he'll lose the pressure but finally a hit thomas 
Maxwell with the sack, and that is 11 now for the Thundering Herd. He bought himself some time. I really thought he was going to be able to get that one off, but he didn't. Mickey Matthews shaking things up. They come with seven this time. They can't block them all. Right there, he can't find a receiver. Right there is where he should have been able to throw it away, but he couldn't. Not only is the sack costly, but the clock keeps running. Second and 13. Dickinson with heat again. He's got Earhart to the midfield stripe. Short of the first down. But you know what? By about three. I was about to say, Joel, it doesn't matter. This is, this is four down. I mean, the whole th this whole drive is a four down situation. They can't afford the luxury of coming up and punting the football, especially the way Marshall moves the ball, and especially they, the way they can run it. This is four down territory. And Coach Don Reed into it just a little bit on the sideline for the Grizzlies. We haven't seen it in a while. I really, really like, especially where this formation is, I really like that quarterback draw right now, Joel. Look at the middle. Dickinson out of the gun on third and three. Going for his wide receiver, and it barely poked away from Pacheco. Maxwell with a big play. It took a while to get there. I have all the respect in the world for Dave Dickinson, but I do not understand why third and three, you would throw the deep corner route. Look at the middle of the field. You got plenty of room to throw a short pass or to run for the first down. Now you put yourself in a situation, fourth and three, where it's all or nothing. Fourth and three, 3.14 left. inside the 30. Now, just as we were talking about being critical, that's a big play on the part of Earhart. But why on fourth and three would you come with the all-out blitz against the best quarterback in one double lane? Seventh catch of the biggest, to say the least, of the afternoon. And what a move by the youngster from Eugene, Oregon. Boy, what a nice shake that he put on the best cover guy. There's the blitz. He stands in there. He doesn't even get touched. Puts it right on the money. Kelly Stenzerud, let's give him credit for running back. He took out the linebacker coming up the middle. And a timeout has been called by Montana. Excellent. Excellent timeout on the part of Dickinson. You're on the 30-yard line. You are in field goal range, but what's the approach? What are we going to do? Right side, left side, run the ball, take the time off. What are we going to do? That's what they'll be talking about when we come back. Place kicker Andy Larson, the junior from Helena, Montana, has to be looking at the prospects down the road with his team trailing by only one. He is one of two this afternoon in that 48-yarder, a career best. Joel Myers, Todd Christensen, Adrian Karsten, the national championship, Division I AA. The home field advantage, and what a big factor it has been for the thundering herd of Marshall. Playoff record crowd on hand of over 32,000. And now a first down for Montana. 30. Set up the screen. Earhart swivels his way down to the 25. One of the things that they want to do here, Joel, besides get a little bit closer for the field goal, is they want to bleed some time. Now we're looking at basically 2.30 and running. They're not in a big hurry, but they do want to get a little bit closer. Don't forget what you just mentioned. 48 was a career best. It's not like you can just count on that being there. They've got to get a little bit closer before they can feel safe about a field goal. And before that, he was only one of three on the season outside of the 40. Dickinson with all day. Earhart again available to the 15. And more and more, they're trying to make it just a chip shot for Andy Larson. One of the things that I was thinking about at this particular juncture, I, w I was critical of Mickey Matthews going with the all-out blitz. That might have been a good situation if for no other reason than you can take them out of field goal range with a sack. They've got 11 sacks today. In that, in that way, they're playing their soft zone. Montana able to take advantage of it. First and 10, just outside of the 14. Here they the blitz is coming, and they bury Stenzeru to the backfield. Scott Smythe 
all over the running back. That's what I was talking about, Simba, because of the fact they've got to push them back. They've got to take some chances because they know they're already in field goal range. I would be surprised here if I'm Montana. You can see them blitzing in the gaps. If I'm Montana, you might want to come under center here, Joel. You might want to take the chances here. Run the ball, get to the spot you want to be in. It's going to be difficult for them to run the ball. Nobody in the backfield. Five wide receivers. Second and 15. They will run the ball. Dickinson inside the 10, spinning his way to the 8. Now it is a chip shot for Larson. An 11-yard run by Dave Dickinson. Right here, this is where Dickinson should come to the sideline and say, where do you want the football? He's got to know right now, where do you want the football? This will give him an opportunity to go over and say, because remember, they went from the left hash and he hooked it. This time, they might want to have it right down the middle. And so what he can do is come under center and say, okay, here's what I want to do. I'll run the quarterback draw, or I'll hand it off to the back to get exactly the spot that you want for the kick. But let me know right now. Pressure on Andy Larson, the place kicker, one of two this afternoon. Well, Marshall does have a one-point lead. That is their first lead of the ball game, we might add, as we check in with Adrian Carson. Adrian? Something to consider here. There is a wind off the surface of the stadium that goes up about as high as the lowest level of the scoreboard here. It's in the face of Montana if they do have to kick. But here's the situation. That big scoreboard, you talk about home field advantage. Well, guess what? It's now in their advantage because that scoreboard blocks the wind so it's negligible if they have to go and kick. And I think the other thing to take into consideration, too, is now that the sun has come down a little bit, that's not as big an issue. We have some shadows. I don't think, I don't think that he can use as an excuse any sort of natural elements here. Dickinson got in C.M. Russell High School to two state championships in Great Falls, Montana. Now he tries to close out his college career with a national championship. The third and four at the eight. I, I'm really surprised here he's coming out of the gun. This gives him a chance to chase him. Joel, I go under center here. Complete. I, I, Went for well. I just don't understand that at all. I really don't. Come under center, sneak the ball, go to the middle of the field. Not only that, but if you do that, Joel, the clock keeps running. Now it's 44 seconds. That is going to give Marshall an opportunity, even with no timeout, to take a shot at it for their own field goal. And here's the other thing, trying to get ahead of the game here in terms of making the field goal. Don't forget, the kickoffs for Montana have been absolutely atrocious. Now the tallest defensive lineman, who has not been in for the last quarter and a half because of an ankle injury, Billy Lyon, comes on the field for this play. It's a 25-yard attempt to give Montana the lead. And Andy Larson does exactly that. They're celebrating too soon, Joel. They're celebrating too soon. The drive started all the way back. At the Montana 20, give all the credit to Dickinson for methodically going underneath. He really only tried to throw one deep ball, and that was that one that was almost picked off where Pacheco was waiting for it on the long square out. They made the big plays when they had to make the plays, but I still wonder, Joel, that situation, you've got to take the time off the clock. 39 seconds, we'll see if Marshall can do something with it when we come back. Montana has the lead for the national championship with only 39 seconds left, but they could have made that 25-yard field goal by Larson the final play of the game. Joel, you're absolutely right. We've mentioned the fact that if they'd have just run the ball, even if they don't get the yardage, it doesn't matter. Kneel down, because now as a result of the incomplete pass, there is still time on the clock. And as you mentioned, both of us have mentioned, this will be interesting to see what happens with this kickoff and what their approach is. They've had some short ones today. Larson. Line drives it. Scooped up from the 20 is Chris Parker. Parker with good yardage all the way across the 40. Breaking tackles to the 46. And the place kicker, Openlander, the junior from Tampa for Marshall University, set a Marshall Stadium record with a 51-yarder back on the 4th of November this season in the game against East Tennessee State. 31 seconds left. Plenty of time for Pennington. 
They are out of timeout, so he's going to have to use the boundaries. Well, either that or they can throw it down the middle of the field and spike it with 31 seconds left. You mentioned you mentioned 51 yards. That means basically they need 20 yards is all they need right here, Joel, to get into field goal range. Four wide receivers with trips on the wide side of the field for Pennington. All day to throw the ball. They need to get it out of bounds, though, and it's complete with their dodge. That's great coverage. That's a great job on the part of Montana and taking their time getting up. The clock is running down. They don't have the first down. He's going to have to spike it. Inside of 10, it stops with seven seconds left. That was left. really costly. Joel, that was really costly. Had to use the sideline. Well, you called it. You called it. The reason I like down the middle of the field is the assumption that you can run the seams. And when you run the seams down the middle of the field, you can take a shot at that. In that case, running a crossing route, unless the guy can break about two or three tackles, he's not going to get out of bounds. Now, Montana headed over to the sideline, but the referee reminded them, wait a minute, a timeout has not been called. Get back over here. Will this be the final play of the national championship game? Marshall hopes they'll have another snap. Will he goes for the sideline run. It's batted away with two seconds left by the quarterback, Justin Hazel. Stay back! Stay back! They got it! Now this will be the last play. That's a nice play by Hazel. Just avoiding interference there. When Marshall won their only national championship on the field in 1992, they did it with a field goal with only 10 seconds left in the game. Now this is interesting. They bring in Z Van because of the fact that he's got a better arm. Oh no, excuse me. Oh come on. Open Lander is going to try and a field goal. 63 yarder. A 63 yard attempt. Jim Openlander has hit a 51 yarder this year. Well they laughed when Dempsey tried it. Gets no. into it. Won't be close. And Montana can celebrate their first national championship. Joe, thanks very much. Coach, congratulations on your first ever national championship. It is. It sure feels good. It's not probably the way you figured it would turn out. Your quarterback was put on his back 11 times today. Well, they have a great defense, and this is a tough place to play, and a lot of things going against us, but we're awfully glad we won it. Was there a turning point in this game, perhaps one minute before the half, when you really picked up some momentum? Well, it would have been even more so had we got uh, some more points just before the half. We had an opportunity and didn't do it. What was it uh, offensively to turn the game around for you in the second half? You were making some success throwing up the middle of the field and connecting there, but everything outside was not working for you. No, I, I think the game uh, was more defense than offense. I, you know, this is not us today, but I'm awfully glad our defense played well, and uh, credit goes to Marshall because that's as good a defense as we've seen in many, many years. Coach, congratulations. Some pretty happy people back in Big Sky country. Okay, Joel. All right, Adrian, I agree with the coach. We talked about it. Who would have believed that the defensive units would really be in the spotlight today? Yeah, but I think in reflection, they're going to remember 1995 and Montana Annals as the year of Dave Dickinson, and deservedly so. Two high school championships at CM Russell in Great Falls, and now a national championship to close out his record-setting collegiate career. That final score, Montana wins the Division I AA, 22-20 over Marshall. Coming up at 4 o'clock Eastern, Seton Hall and Ohio State right after U.S. Alpine skiing from Park City, Utah. Now for Todd Christensen and Adrian Garson, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us this afternoon in Huntington, West Virginia. And congratulations once again to the Montana Grizzlies.